Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pokemon Speedruns Podcast, Season 3, Episode 4. Uh, we got a great episode for you all today. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Etiquette, and with me are our usual hosts, Iron. Hello. Jordan97. Hello. And Tucker Lorette. Hello. Uh, and with us today, we have two very special guests. Uh, we've got Swiftaloo. Hi. And Zeke. Hi. All right. Um, so uh, without, you know, dilly-dallying too much, uh, we are going to jump right into the focus topic this time around. Um, so Swift and Zeke, take it away. So Zeke got a world record in Pokemon and Coliseum any percent here. Um, you can see he's catching this. Qu I didn't even know it was female. <laughs> yeah, there's something for that. I don't know. Nah, Somebody was asking me about the quill. Cool, I don't know. The quill cool was so I, goofy. The, 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 this quill was really funny. So this was like the cusp of a runnable quill, it seemed like, honestly. Because it's it was yeah. lonely nature. And it was, it was also pretty, pretty low IV. Terrible. Honestly, it's like lower end of runnable. But like, I, I got kind of lucky with it. And I was able to make yeah. it work. Yeah, so... A little bit about Colosseum. Um, purification is based a lot around what nature you get. So there are some natures in this game that are really good for purification, and there's some that are just not great for purification. And Zeke got a quill that really wasn't that great for purification. Like it was okay, but it wasn't amazing. Um, it was lonely. Lonely is a 30% chance to get into hyper mode and then just decreases as uh, the bar goes down, which uh, is not great when you need uh, two calls at the very least. Uh, yeah, not to mention the special attack was... Mm, it could be it could be better for something like this, but... <laughs> I mean, it'll show. I think it was 18 IV. But yeah, it's yeah. like... Uh, as the heart gauge goes down, eventually... It uh, start gaining XP and learning moves, and the faster that happens, the better, obviously, and I was a little unlucky there. Yeah. 58, because recently, um, Coliseum Runners have been doing more of the Lab Death or Lab Skip strat, um, which used to have more strict parameters, but Zeke rerouted in, uh, having pretty much the same parameters as the standard route, so hopefully this becomes the standard strat eventually. Um, it's a faster strat. It saves. It can save up to about two minutes. Um, I think it's estimated to save about like a minute and a half. You said. I've seen timings from Ixarian that said it should be around a minute and a half, depending on your quill. But in my experience, it's closer to ninety seconds to two minutes. I think. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Originally, Ixarian had routed this out. Um, you can skip basically some trainers in the lab uh, if you just you like just send out a Pokemon and just die to it. So usually we just sack the Plusle. Um You skip about six fights doing this because you just fight them. <laughs> it's five. <laughs> oh, it's five. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you uh, you end up fighting them and then uh, Plusle just dies. And for some reason the game just doesn't flag uh, that the the fight was uh, so, not completed so they just don't respond it's it's like the it has to do with like the trainer type and location so it's like the cypher peons um just like activating them like clears them so you don't have to win any of the fights um against like that type of trainer there's i think three more possible that uh we don't skip that could theoretically be skipped but uh there's their fast fights. They're not really worth skipping. Nice SP on slot one, by the way. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I wrote this <laughs> in. It's it makes the candy menu way faster. That's fair. Yeah. Um, menus in this game can be funny, especially in the PC, and especially for stuff like this. Um, that's even the reason why you skip the fights is like so Coliseum, uh, all animations are forced on. So by skipping those fights, you honestly save a lot of time, even though you need to go back through like this every single time you die to one of these fights. Which seems yeah. slow, but it's not when you factor in all the animations you have to go through per fight. I think, 
I think part of why it took so long for anyone to like seriously take a look into this being viable was just um how like people thought it was just slow to lose the fights. Um but like Kolava's our fastest option. What to do these for this? For the... Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, that's that's just a slightly faster way to do that room, even though I did it kind of slowly, it's still faster than like going around the trainer. Yeah, you can um, you can skip that trader, but you could also hit that trader if you're not careful. Yeah, you could. Most people don't really go for that. In fact, Zeke has hit it on that. a previous run that was on 328 pace. I don't think anyone else has ever done that. I'm mm. probably the only person who goes for that because it's like totally not worth it, but it's so funny. Oh dear. Yeah, it was just uh, the, the newer route just skips five fights does a couple fights earlier slightly differently to get extra exp and and you're basically just missing a level on both pokes for the ending which ends up not mattering too much i think it only mattered you said for like the ludicolo originally on mirror b2 but you managed yeah. to find a way to uh route that uh around that basically yeah so the reason there's originally like a tight stat requirement on Quill when this route was thought of was that you wanted to have the stats to sort of make that missing level not matter, but I came up with a, a couple ways around a couple fights such that uh, without losing too much time it's okay to run a lower uh, special attack stat. Because I think... Uh, I don't remember the number, but uh, I like 20. I think it's 20 IV. At 20 IV, there's a fire blast range at the end game that's 13, 16. And I didn't want to route anything like worse than that because it's a really awful range. Right, if, yeah. If you miss it, you die. But uh, I came up with like a workaround for it if you're not super likely to hit the range. Because you were running an 18 IV quill. <laughs> yeah, I was forced into doing it. It's just uh, on Mirror B2 as like a level 44 Ludicolo and it's a dumb fire blast range with my special attack. So I think it was like it adds a protect and then you use fire blast on something else. So it costs like 10 ish seconds over the standard fight. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it's like, definitely uh, for uh for reference basically a runnable quill uh is like a minimum of 57 although i don't think i'd even see zeke take 57 at this point <laughs> i think my minimum number for an iv would be 18 which would be like a really low 58 but you could sort of run anything down to like 14 but uh, obviously yeah. the lower end of like a runnable range is always gonna like suck yeah and there's the quill there so it's got good speed, but its special attack is not great, which is... The speed is important, um, but it's not as important, I feel, as special attack, but uh, I still managed to make it work, which was good. My quill was frustrating because it was like all of its stats were really good except its special attack, which was just sort of <laughs> middling. It was unfortunate. It was IV but... being 18 and it's your special attack and special defense. Yeah, but like... It, I was I was very annoyed when I first got it. I'm pretty sure when I like first caught it and saw its stats, I was like, I should reset this, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good thing you did it. You wouldn't have been able to have this run otherwise. Yeah. Uh. I don't. So like, I think uh, the old record that Ixarian did, like basically, we didn't have proper route for this route that I'm doing, like the way it came up was that uh, skipping these fights was originally routed and like uh, sort of other categories that aren't super relevant. I think it was originally put into no snags, which only uses Espeon and Umbreon. And the reason it was viable there was Espeon just has the experience share on for like the whole run. So losing a level doesn't matter a ton for it. Uh, it's harder to make it work when you have two pokes that you want to be higher level. Like, we obviously don't want Typhlosion to just be under level later. Um, so that's, yeah. I think I think that's why it took so long to like 
for anyone to really look into it because I know it was routed for no snags and also for Bayleaf because apparently people wrote Bayleaf uh, it was also it was routed for that before it was routed for Quava um, and Ixarian a couple years ago I guess like a year and a half ago uh, sort of he sort of made his own timings he came up with uh, he did a couple fights differently and he came up with his own EXP route and he just sort of uh, he beat the whatever the current record was by like 10-ish seconds or something and then just like left the game but the problem with that was that he never released like any actual version of his notes and um so for like a year and a half uh the record used a different route than anyone else who had ever played and we had and nobody else had even like attempted to use that route and we had no resources on that route and nobody knew anything about it and uh I, it was what probably in like January I decided I was gonna just look into it and sort of reverse engineer the route myself so and I have I, a I have a question for you uh, that I noticed uh, how did you know that there was a lab sample in the the doors there like the, the glass <laughs> doors okay. how did, did you just guess wait what are, I wasn't really, really paying attention to the video what was, what was that so you you did the you did the trainer skip right with the scientist so you didn't really get to check if there was a lab sample there oh, but you so... went to the, <laughs> the back doors there no i'm not actually gonna go in i just one left i have two samples already i, I just went oh. left to activate the trainer instead of going right because it's the same distance I oh, it'd be oh, oh. <laughs> that's just that's just me going funny mode okay so just being a little quirky i get it i get it mm -hmm. but yeah it was Xarin came up with the route and i sort of ended up taking what I, I i i sort of just reverse engineered it using his run and i ended up cleaning up some stuff that i think he did uh unoptimally and i added some different stuff uh to make to sort of help the stat requirement and i think it turned out like it, it's, it's been some rough patches. It's turned out pretty good, I think. Like, um, especially the uh, the record run was sort of just like a really, really good showcase of the route, and nothing went like terribly wrong. Only like a handful of dumb things, and even with those, it was like a very good uh, demonstration of what the route should look like. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It was it was really frustrating for me because I remember. Uh, I remember I was asking around the Discord, I was asking the moderators in the Discord, I was like, do we have any resources whatsoever on this route? And all I got was no, no, no. It's like, it didn't it didn't seem right to me that the record used a completely different route and we had no knowledge, no resources on it whatsoever. It was very frustrating for me. <laughs> so you wanted to be the change that you wanted to see in the world? Uh... To be clearly it paid off. I don't know, it just seems so dumb that, like, the record just used a different route and nobody asked any questions about it. Everyone was just like, okay, we will pretend it doesn't exist. It's, it's just very bizarre. Hollow community is quite small, so... And there's not a lot of people, I think, grinding for record in the community. There's, there's maybe two to three people, I would say is i don't know it's it's hard but like it is just frustrating that like you know you you come up with your own route and then you get the record and you release no resources there's like all i could find was like some timings and some stuff that explained what he did differently and that was it yeah so there's, there's a lot of work i had to do to just, just just even have the route come together at all even though the work okay. had already been done by someone else. I have to imagine that you must know a lot more about the game now. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe not, but working at like reverse engineering, is, like that's one of the good ways to learn more about the, or like get more into like the, the feel of the game, I guess, for lack of a better term. Yeah, for sure. I think like, um, I think the biggest separator for just like players in this game is just knowledge of the game. Like, 
uh, when something goes wrong, the player who can come up with the best way around it the fastest is going to be much more successful than everyone else around them. Yeah, this game is very heavily based on your knowledge, and it takes a really long time to like learn all the little things that you need to do to fix stuff. Like PSR runs are uh, pretty notorious for having like flowcharts that you can follow, and I mean, if something goes wrong, it's not usually too hard to back it up, or there's already notes for it if it's something that's kind of likely. But this game, there's a lot of things that can happen, and uh, you don't always have a flowchart for every single little thing that happens. Like, I know one thing I encountered was uh, on the Dakim 1 fight, uh, <laughs> I got Marsh Stomp lead, and I actually had to KO the Marsh Stomp uh, first turn because my Typhlosion was too slow, otherwise I wouldn't outspeed it. Um, so I had to KO that, and then Matang uses Earthquake, and it crit Golem, and there was no notes for what happens when it crits Golem. And uh, I lost that run because of that, because yeah, <laughs> so I didn't know how the AI worked. Because like we can't man up our secondary, there's a lot of things that can go very differently, especially with like low speed Koalvas, I think cause like the most variance. Because like even with like weird defenses, you can sort of figure out what's going on anyway, but like it's, it's the speed that's really awkward that can uh, get you in sticky situations. Um, yeah, there's there's just, um, especially later on like boss fights, um, there can be a lot of like branches and there's, um, there's stuff like that where like if it crits itself, we don't have notes for that. There's other yeah. fights that use Earthquake and if they crit their ally, we may not have notes for that. Uh, there's uh, two fights at the ending that have like so many branches that there's just some stuff that's left out because it's rare and uh, we assume that if you encounter this very rare thing that you can probably deal with it because it's going to be very similar to like some other branches. But like yeah, there's, I... there's known branches that we don't have like routed in the notes just because there's it's already like such a large amount of like notes in a small portion. It's like just so much stuff together at once it's hard to just like keep adding stuff. Yeah, the last two fights of the game are notorious for being about, like, 20 pages long. Um, with each fight being about 10 pages each. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but, yeah, that's only because there's so many different things that could happen, such as, oh, uh, the, the trainer used X attacks or X specs? Oh, then follow this flowchart instead. Like, um, I think, I think uh, the final fight, what it has... So he has six pokes, he can lead uh, any of five of them together. Yeah. And he can send anything out. In a, he can he can send out anything in any order with like I think there's like two exceptions, like sat like there's some dumb stuff like Machamp either gets sent out first or last. Salamence is like either like second or fourth. It's like weird stuff like that. So there's very few exceptions to like how many possible branches there are. So it's just like a lot. Yeah, I believe honestly the only fight I can think of that actually has crits listed and like a branch off that is probably the Venus One fight. This um, is very few, very few. Yeah, because I think there's only one listed for Steelix crits Delcaddy. Yeah, I think there is. The reason for that I think is just because like normally on Dakim One you don't even see an earthquake, right? So. It's oh well, I'm talking not... about Venus. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying that like that's the reason oh. there's not like a crit there is because it's very rare that you see an earthquake in the first place. Unlike older yeah. Venus strats, uh, it's very common to see an earthquake. Right, because uh, Steelix just—it's pretty much guaranteed to use earthquake if it's on the field. So pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, it's like like it doesn't matter much by the end like by the end of the run we're one hit KO and pretty much everything but like there's weird stuff in the midsection where like we're under leveled and we have to give opponent opposing pokemon turns while we set up and stuff it's like a lot of different things can happen we're just giving the opponents turns right yeah i know like um you were talking about defenses a little bit and i do agree they don't matter too much except for when you're trying to hit your typhlosion <laughs> to blaze <laughs> it sucks if it's like super low IV. Yeah, I think I think thankfully with 
Uh, anywhere we're getting blaze, there's like numerous ways to get it, so it's not like that's never true. Look really backed into a corner, like my my tie had like really good HP IV here, so like could psychic it if it was worse or if it had taken damage. I could side beam it if it was already near blaze, like a hidden power. It. Like there's there's options depending on your stats. Yeah, we hit Typhlosion the Blaze a lot uh, by using Espeon, uh, mostly for Mountain Battle, but it's also used in around this area as well. Um, it's pretty important just for the extra damage, honestly, but also for the next fight, kind of manipulates the AI to target Typhlosion uh, instead of Espeon, because if it targets Espeon, it's so slow. Altaria yeah. will just spam Pursuit until the end of time. Like, we carry Blaze from this point until, like, right before the very end, right before, like, the last segment. Um, and the reason, like, the reason for that is both extra damage and another thing is that, um, like, everything in the second half has good AI, so, like, um, it, if it detects a kill, it will go for it. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge part of the Blaze setup, too, is that we're taking advantage of the fact that everything will just target tie because it's in death range. Yeah, and um, you, there is the risk that you can lose Blaze because a lot of the time when you're utilizing Blaze, you're using Fire Blast. So if you miss Fire Blast, your Typhlosion is likely dead. Um, so it adds a little bit of risk, which yeah. in turn kind of links back to you need to have the knowledge of the game because if you lose Blaze, you really want that knowledge to try and figure out how to get it back if that happens. I'm fairly certain if you miss a single fire blast while in blaze, you just die. Yeah. <laughs> All like, those endgame Pokemon are very high level. There's like six ish that you can like can miss and uh, don't die if you miss out of like I think when I counted there's like fifteen to twenty overall fire blasts in a run, and about a quarter of them are like safe to miss. Or like not but they just won't get you auto killed. Yeah. But I think for the all the boss ones, like the admins here, uh, you miss a fire blast, you're dead. Except for Iron, where you don't use fire blasts, unless you're being funny on Raikou. I think this was a funny one, <laughs> because uh, my health setup, I think it, it's just Altaria's best move. You just like, Ooh. Uh, like it's, it's a weird health setup here, where like it can either use Fly or Pursuit, because what it checks is... Uh, it checks double pursuit, uh, double pursuit's damage versus fly's damage. Uh, if you have a Pokemon that you can switch into, <laughs> so oh, you were in quick attack range and he went for Altaria. Yeah. yeah. So what I did here was I just went for that, and then I I believe I just potion tie out of QA range for that because uh, gave uh. me like a good it gave me a good blaze setup. Yeah, yeah. Again, just. It, that, those wouldn't be listed in the notes, it's just more knowledge that uh, you have on this game, basically. I don't know if that one so is. so much experience. I feel like that's like, uh, that was like an obvious one for me, I feel like. That might not be in the notes, but that's one of those things where it's like, I feel like it's pretty easy to notice and just sort of do. Bro, there is a vehicle outside and it's being very loud. <laughs> But because uh, you leveled up, you weren't in blade or you weren't in quick attack range anymore, so well, didn't it's use it. Of the oh right, the AI cheats. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Cheater AI. So the AI um, will pick a move after you've used items. It seems like in this game, I, 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 is that uh, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, there's there's a couple situations where like um, you're forced into like letting giving a turn to something that like hits you with a status condition. Like sometimes in that fight, the the Golbat, you give the Golbat a couple turns, and um, if it can't kill anything, it uses Confuse Ray on the Pokemon that it does the most damage to. And um, yeah, that's it's almost always Espeon. So like when that happens, we just like full heal Espeon, and then it'll just confuse Ray again. Oh, it's so slow when that happens. You have to sit there for like, I think two to three consecutive turns full healing your Espeon because you're trying to kill everything else except that Golbat. 
Because everything else is way more scary than that Golbat. While well, that Golbat just keeps spamming. Yeah, I think it, it's like when it's like Golbat and I think Huntail Lead or something. It's like just you're waiting for the Altaria to come on the field because the Altaria gives you like you can give the Altaria turn safely because it either uh, does fly or uses Pursuit, which doesn't kill. Yeah. Although, Altaria seems to appeal, appear on the field earlier when you have that lead, specifically. At least for this route, differs it for later routes. It's not, it's not the route, it's just you, you got unlucky, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, it's happened twice. It happened to both Sparkle and I. You can't tell me it's oh, unlucky. unlucky. I don't know. Uh, it's just, just more variance, you just got unlucky. There's still a lot of things we don't know about this game, honestly. Uh, such as that, like, what has the AI been affected by, yeah. by, uh, There's a number the lower of, level. like, switch-ins that we don't know about, or, like, the reason for, uh, I think, like, a lot of later stuff, uh, especially the final two bosses, there's a lot of, like, like, weights that the AI considers, where it's, like, uh, it's weighing different variables, and then, uh, depending on, like, I don't know, it's just stupid. And then it's like, it's we'll funny. Usually, we'll usually pick one, and but sometimes doesn't because it's not absolute. It's just like weighted to be a certain way. It's like that Magnemite fight you were looking at. That was dumb. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, also, one change to this route. Um... That can it, it has been funny, at least for me, is uh you actually keep Psybeam, um, and you just yeah. get rid of return. Normally, well before you would keep return and teach uh psychic over Psybeam, but now it's actually kept for PP management. You're able to skip some ethers that you usually grab in the early game. Uh yeah, so one of my favorite parts about this game and especially XD is the PP management, uh, because uh it's a it's done really well in both games um and the older route basically got three ethers and three elixirs this one only gets three elixirs um and to make up for that we have psybeam instead so our final move set here is psybeam psychic hidden power grass and protect uh the other route would have psychic return hidden power protect and um just having psybeam over return gives us like another high damage option Whereas in the older route, return is only really useful in the first half, and then you sort of stop using it. Um, but you keep it because you don't need Psybeam, and Psychic has a much faster animation than Psybeam does. So instead of like managing your PP with a different move in the older route, you just use Psychic over and over and use your extra PP items on it. Um, this just happened to work out really well, where we just barely have enough pp and enough items to manage uh all our psychics like it, i remember when i was writing the pp it, it was like very tight and i had to like make a handful of revisions over time but uh yeah we end up using two elixirs on sb one at like the beginning of this area well where the first one is i think it, yeah it's one at the beginning of this area one there on sb and then yeah it's after uh, mirror b the one on quill i think is earlier too like they're both high. after Mirror B. And then there's that one. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's really, I really like the way it turned out. Uh, like, we are, like, final Fire Blast uh, usage until we get, like, a heal here is, like, on the very final fight for the last two fights. And you, like, you, like, I think when I used that elixir just now, I was out of psychics. And it's, like, I just like stuff like that. Small stuff like that, I think, is cool. Yeah, despite all the variants that can happen, usually the PP count is consistent across the board for all that. The, the only thing I can really mess you up is, like, missing moves. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> have like, fire blast. Food. So it's it's mostly consistent. It's just, uh, don't get screwed over, mostly, because we do have, like, a... I think we have... Mm, I think we have, like, some extra fire blast earlier. And then, like, later we don't really have any extras, but there's still some leeway with it.
I totally forgot how dumb my blaze setup was here. I like leveled out a blaze and had to get it back in the next fight. It was dumb. Yeah, so one of the disadvantages of teaching return over um uh or, or not having a return anymore is like return's a really good way to get yourself back into blaze. That's um dumb. especially if you're high HP. I guess, but that's only really like if you get knocked out, I guess. Just hidden powers. You like die really basically. <laughs> Yeah, which uh, like not, not unlikely to happen. Old. But yeah, we we have like, Psybeam does like two thirds of Ty's health. Psychic like puts nearly kills it, and then like Hidden Power is like a low option, like a really low power move to chip it back in a blaze. But yeah, this fight here is like fake outs. So this, uh, when if you like level out a blaze there, it's not a big deal because you just get put back in blaze by a fake out in this fight. Yeah, there's so this fight specifically has three different cases. From what I can tell, this is case three. Um, yes. Yeah, I can tell because your SP is very low. I'm assuming because the sheet told you that you can't get case one, which uh, that sheet's funny. Yeah, I don't know. It was uh, I don't know. The defense on the SP wasn't very good. I don't run like a high defense requirement or anything, so it's like. What the three cases are one if sp on like the, it's just this fight is weird because it has fake out and explosion ai so it's just like acts awkwardly no matter what yeah it uh, is strange yeah the three cases we have is one is sp on doesn't so the nuzleaf has explosion the graveler has self-destruct one is sp on dies to neither two is sp on dies to uh self-destruct and is uh dies to both uh, I ended up made, keeping my health a certain way. I like took a hit earlier somewhere and then just didn't heal it so that I was dead to both hits for this fight. Yeah, because you, if you don't have case one, which is the best uh, option for this, then you want case three, which is what Zeke was aiming for. Otherwise, you're going to get case two, which is slow and it sucks. Um, so Zeke made sure to recognize that he wouldn't have case one, so he made sure yeah. to keep his health the way it is. Uh, I'm sure so that I double checked that long range. That was so sketchy. It was like a seven and eight, and if I lost, I would have cried. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it turns out that there is a, a little mishaps with the sheet that have been it's fixed. Whatever. You did, you did <laughs> fix it. You did great. I did fix it. Uh, there were some EXP mishaps that showed up because i was i was making some saves for this game and uh turns out i had case one when the sheet was telling me i did not have case one uh but don't worry it's fixed now so it tells yeah, me i have I case don't. one i had to make my own like or i had to like edit my own version of a spreadsheet like for this route and i don't know how to use spreadsheets so i i like messed up a few things and she fixed it for me I even added uh, calcium because there was some EV mishaps, which were not Zeke's fault. It seems to have been from the original sheet. Um, but it's all good, because uh, it's fixed now. Here. We don't blame anybody. <laughs> nobody's fault. Nobody's fault except the person who originally made the sheet. Yeah, I don't know. But like this run, I think overall, it was, like, it was good. Uh, the only things that really went wrong was like I missed uh, a range earlier that was like a 7 and 8 and cost me like 90 seconds I missed two fire blasts which cost me like 2 minutes ish and I there's two captures in this run uh, we both just for both of them we just throw a great ball of full health which ends up being a 40.96% to catch and one of them I got first ball, the other one I got third ball, which cost me another 90 seconds. Yeah, that, that really meta tight cool. catch really sucks. Um, Those are like the only things that actually went wrong. So like a handful of minutes, but like in a run like this, you're always going to lose time somewhere. So it's like it ended up being good and working out just fine. Yeah, unless you're tasked, then you just never lose time, you though. <laughs> Tested on optimal menus, I'm dissatisfied. That's true. That is quite funny, too. Um, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes you just have to kind of recognize that you're going to take a, a hit to your time somewhere along the run. Just because, like, it's really not often that runs get this far, like, up to Gonzap. Because 
usually you'll either die to something else in the run, like Venus 1, which is probably the biggest one. They call it the Great Equalizer because it's usually the biggest run killer. Um, oh, come on. Firma is as well. Yeah, that's just the way these runs go. I don't know. Yeah, so sometimes you'll just have to accept that you take a time loss somewhere, but then you could possibly still make up time elsewhere uh, later in the run. There's little things that you can do here and there to try and do that. I'm trying to remember how I phrased it, because I got asked about that, and I was like... I don't remember what I said. It was like, everyone gets unlucky, so at some point it's like... It's just whether or not you are... If you, like, manage to not make any execution mistakes, if you manage to adapt whenever something does go wrong. Like, at some point... Uh, you're just trying to out execute uh, your whatever bad luck happens in the run. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, with Pokemon runs, like, the only way you can really make up for bad RNG is by your execution, because that's really the only thing you can control. <laughs> so. Yeah, like, everyone gets unlucky. Every run has something wrong with it. You just gotta manage to play around as best you can. Oh, I'm getting terrible flashbacks in my end game. I ran out of hypers. It's just, I was so scared. You did? Yeah, this this route is really tight with uh, <laughs> healing items. I've I, like, noticed. I literally, I literally like sat on that that menu trying to figure out what to do because I didn't want to use that hyper. Ooh. I yeah. was just like thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. Tried to teach it to Maku too. Yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> old, old route always had tie and slot one there. This route has Maku dead and slot one, and it makes some of the item menus harder. Yeah. It's, uh... It... <laughs> the the healing item, though, that's... Uh, it is pretty tough. Like, you only buy... So in the, the standard route, you normally buy 11 hypers, which Zeke no does idea. not agree with. I have no idea how many items that route buys, because I've never used it. It's 11. 11 hypers. <laughs> instead of uh, the 7 that you buy in Agate. So usually you have 4 extra hypers, but uh, now you're down 4 hypers. And, you know, with anything that can really go wrong, you could burn through those heal he healing items is, extremely yeah. quick. There's a pair of extra item boxes. There's a 2 hyper box and a 3 hyper box and a single full restore box also. like. Yeah, the full restore is definitely by far the slowest one to go for though and the least the, the, the uh two paid off slower. Hmm? two hypers are slower it's just more worth it yeah because you get two weird. it has uh, i should probably say the full restore has uh the least reward from it because you only get yeah. one yeah and generally like with the two hypers that zeke is talking about that's after firma and by then there's a pretty good chance that you don't have a lot of healing items uh, to just kind of throw around. Yeah, basically the segment before is like some scuffed health management because you try to get yourself knocked into blaze and then for the final fight of the segment you want both your pokes to be at full so there's just like weird health management and you could very easily be short on potions. Yeah, because the game uh, when you're you pick up like a super potion box and uh, by the time you're actually healing Pokemon you have like five uh, super potions and five potions. And the supers are basically like your full heal item at that point. Uh, and you can just burn through those so quickly. Potions are usually used for later, just for some extra blaze management. Oh, that's nice what crit. It was. That's, that was what cost me my potion. That, dude, I, I got so scared at that. I played around it well, but like, like I thankfully I immediately like reacted properly to it. My god, that yeah. scared the hell out of me. Yeah, that Zangoose, uh, Slash crit just kind of totally sucks. Kind of <laughs> thing. So like, yeah, that's like the big difference, or like a, the other big difference is that uh, there's a Makuhita capture at the very beginning. Um, thankfully, it's a guaranteed catch. It bypasses the catch formula. Um, but there's a Makuhita at the very beginning, and the reason we catch it is basically to manipulate opposing AI. Um, on one fight earlier, Firma fight. Um, our Pokemon in our party at that point are Kulava, Makuhita, and Espeon, and that trainer has a Mantine, and it, we basically manipulate it so that uh, it 
we have the Mantine kill off everything that isn't Espeon, and then we have Espeon knock out a bunch of stuff when it's the only poke left alive in our party. And that gets us a bunch of extra experience that the older route uh, didn't get. And that uh, helps make up for some of the EXP we lose later when we skip the five fights. Yeah, and, it's um, super, super nice. And then at the very ending, uh, so the reason Makushi is in slot one at all here is uh, one, we used an earlier fight. So the previous route used plus as a sacrifice on the first fight of this area with the Zangoose. So basically, I had. No, I it used to, to be Meditite. I was Medi. Oh, that's right. It was yeah. Meditite. It's changed to Meditite. Um, used to be plus, so that's years ago. I'm just old. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I had to basically. Ch I basically had to decide. Oh, you had to check the uh, defense on Medi. Yeah, there's like an awkward thing, but the big thing is that like I had to, I had to decide whether I wanted to sack a poke on that fight or on Mirror B2. And it looked, I, when I was looking at it, see Mirror B2 is better for it. Uh, so the problem with Meditite is that uh, there's a Caesar on the, well, I should, the whole reason we have uh, like a fodder in slot one that's already fainted. Um, is that for the final two fights, you get healed in, like before both of them. And um, having a fodder on the field means that the AI will target it instead of uh, your Espeon. Um, but there is something awkward on the final fight where um, he has a Caesar, And um, with Meditite, um, whether or not Caesar would target Meditite was dependent on Meditite and Espeon's defense stats. Uh, because its best move is Silver Wind, which is super effective on one and not on the other. So, depending on your defenses, that fight uh, just like would be really, really awkward. Um, with Makuhita, it's like 99 plus percent to target Makuhita. It's like so, so yeah. extremely rare for it to be possible to not target Makuhita. You... Yeah, you so need. It's the Maku... like a safer version of the same fight. <laughs> Thanks to Makuhita. Yeah, the Makuhita needs to be super high, like, defense IV uh, on top of plus defense, and the Espeon needs to be, like, pretty low defense IV. I think yeah. I looked at it, and it needs... If your Espeon is lower than 11 IV in defense, then there is a very small chance uh, that the Scizor can target your Espeon instead. Yeah, it's, it's such a, like, ridiculously small chance that we just, like, ignore it, but, um... I don't. Yeah, but before it was closer to like a, it was closer to like a 50-50 or like a 40% for Meditite to not get targeted by the Caesar. Like it was just it, an amount that was like just too much and was very frustrating. Um, the funny thing about this one is that uh, <laughs> because I, when I was first looking into this, I couldn't figure out why the Caesar was attacking Bakuhita because Silverwind in this situation does do more damage to Espeon and it one hit KOs both of them. So when I was looking at it, I was like, why is it targeting Makuhita? It does more damage to Espeon. And it, yeah, the AI just does something funny where it checks uh, it, its its other move, is Metal Claw, its other attacking move. And on Makuhita, Metal Claw does more than Silver Wind. So it checks its two strongest moves against each poke on the field. So it checks Metal Claw on Makuhita versus Silver Wind on Espeon. They both one hit KO. So there's like a tie there. So it defaults to whichever does more damage. So Metal Claw does more damage to Makuhita than Silverwind does to Espeon. So it attacks Makuhita, but it changes its move from Metal Claw to Silverwind because Silverwind also one hit KOs and has higher accuracy. So it's like just a <laughs> weird complex chain of dumb stuff that I didn't realize when I was like first trying to figure out why that happened. This game is just so funny. Honestly, like Juan has looked a lot into the AI, and I don't know what we would do without him at this point. Uh, I, was so, I was so angry. He, he's like random to use X attacks and he used them, and it ended up getting plus a whole bunch of levels, which was slow, and it made me a salty little baby. Yeah. Um, again, that's just another part of like the fight can just go a bunch of different ways, branch and things like that. Just kind of had to know where to back it up if there's no notes listed. Um. Yeah, we have like a couple switch-ins that aren't like routed fully or whatever. And it's, it's it's really annoying when you encounter them, but like they're very rare and it's it's not often anyone really encounters them, so a lot of the time it just like goes unnoticed. 
Yeah. But generally, uh, if you've played this game enough and done enough runs, you'll know the beats of like what you need to what move you need to use on what Pokemon, what Pokemon is more of a threat on the field versus the other. Which makes it but, pretty easy to back it up, but it does take time. <laughs> but yeah, like the that. whole... There's a, there's a lot of taking advantage of the AI in this run, because uh, we have high low health for so much of the run, and we have a fodder for the end game, which lets us set up. And, uh, yeah, it's just a lot of manipulating the AI. That's what makes uh, this game so good. Uh, the AI in this game is smart. Thank goodness. <laughs> Only for most of the second half and a handful of trades in the first half for some unfathomable reason. Uh, well, I mean, at least it's for the end game because you you <laughs> yeah. do not want random AI for end game. Uh, Gen one is a pretty good example, I think, of that. If you think about Red uh, with Agatha, that's random AI, as far as I know. And it sucks, because you could just I, lose so much time on that fight. <laughs> I know a game that has random AI for the end game. Yeah, it's pretty good for early game, because generally you're going to be a pretty low level, so having that randomness can help save you, but when it comes, when it comes to end game, you're usually like fine, so you don't want that. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, see, like, thank, it's, it's, it's so much... Uh, it's so much more frustrating when it's random, I feel like, because, like, at, le at least we know what's going to happen. So, like, if something goes wrong, it's usually your fault and not just at the whims of the game. Yeah, it, <laughs> there's been a, a number of silly things that happen at the end of this game. Just a uh, cool, cool, cool game. Uh, one time... Uh, photo XD, a runner was on it. I think it was like 326 pace. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. It was like such a, it was like the luckiest run I've ever seen. And then he was one turn away from the ending and uh, he had a low damage roll. And then he got like another low damage roll and didn't kill the Slow King and it, and he got killed because of it. It was like, it was really stupid and it was really sad to see. No. Oh, I was so mad this Kualavik because I missed the Houndoom range. <laughs> that is kind of surprising. So the Houndoom range, you actually use your physical attack for that, so to miss that range with this Kualavik is really funny. Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, we, we uh... literally teach Earthquake for this one fight. Thankfully, <laughs> Earthquake is not out of the way at all, but we literally only teach it for this. <laughs> and... The Houndoom was like plus defense or something because it definitely shouldn't have lived that. <laughs> just not enough. Not enough attack, clearly. But yeah, if it was a naughty just... quill, you would have gotten it. It's like missing that level up there. The old road had you at a higher level for this for this range, too. So. It's like slightly more. Like it has anything. Pardon? What? It doesn't even look like it has anything. I know. <laughs> yeah, it, it was dumb. It definitely just like lived on one. It was like plus defense. It was stupid. I was mad. Definitely shouldn't have lived. <laughs> this is pretty funny. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I like had. I think I, I like used. I like went for a fire blast range, and then I had to like. I used to, like on an Absol, and Absol is pressure, and I like didn't realize it as I was doing it, and then I had to like make an adjustment later Ooh. but it did end up working it was, you know, I didn't yeah know it was I, I lost like probably a single digit number a second because of it it's just like a weird thing I did and then ended up uh, being able to play around it yeah the absolute fight is earlier yeah I don't know it should it be was, in like the gauntlet like, there should be like a sharpedo and bird mighty Anna on the field Actually, yeah, I think it's, it's after it's this fight. Whatever. Yeah, it's the one after. It's whatever. It was just... It was, <laughs> uh... Because it was Sharpedo lead, yeah. So what I should have done was I should have double targeted Sharpedo. And I just, uh... I went for Fire Blast on Absol, because if you hit the range, it's faster. Yeah, uh, but, but I, then you lose out on Fire Blast, which sucks for a later fight. Time. But yeah, it caught, that was... Because I, I have two Fire Blasts here, I think. Is that right? Uh, 
no, I know an older route, it's normally three or something. Yeah, there's two. I did have two here. So like that that used up my last fire blast. <laughs> when I if I used if I double targeted Sharpedo, it would have killed my Diana guaranteed. And um yeah, would have uh, saved me a fire blast for later, but uh knocking out both pokes here is slightly faster because it uh, prevents uh, move animation from going off. Yeah, that is unfortunate. <laughs> it, Although I think silly. if you don't hit it, it doesn't use both the PP. I think you told me, right? Yeah, uh, pressure only applies when you hit a move, not if you miss. It was so funny. I mean, that's just that's just the ability. It's not it's not this game. I know it's just funny how it works. Yeah. Is it, is it time to move on to XD? Unless you have more questions about this, then yeah. Well, uh, I'm also just noticing that I think that was like a, around like 50 minutes. Nice. Like, like a 50 minute discussion. I remember, I think a while ago but uh, the first time we did this it ended up being like two hours before we even got to like a break <laughs> conscious oh. of that <laughs> but oh anyway, yeah i'll i'll let you go on with xd because i assume there's a lot of insight into this as well this one is it <laughs> i i have a strange relationship with this game it's it's weird to talk about because like there's so much it's so much harder, but there's so much less to talk about because, uh, like in Call Over, I'm talking about manipulating the AI and having like low level stuff to get targeted all the time. Uh, this game, uh, for like the first half, is like the AI is completely random. And then later on, uh, it becomes like it's there's like, okay, so there's like three types of AI in this there's completely random. There's like weighted random that is random, but more likely to do certain things than others. And then there is the quote unquote good AI in this game, which is it uses it sees what its strongest move is on each poke on the field. So like, um, for example, there's a what? It's a, there's a Quagsire. Well, that's not a bad example. There's a <laughs> uh, for the final uh, what what the. I don't know what the best example is. Uh, whatever. It's mostly irrelevant. But uh, it'll pick like its strongest move on each poke. So uh, there's like a Sharpedo later. And uh, its strongest move would be like Bite on Espeon. And so it, it rolls Bite as its move. But then it randomizes its target anyway. I guess the best example. There's a, there's a Ninja Ask at the very end. And... Um, its best move is Silverwind on Espeon, so it picks Silverwind on Espeon, and then it randomizes its target, because this game is funny and made for children. <laughs> They're like this? I don't know. This game... <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this game, man. Uh, I guess best I I'll start with the Teddy Ursa, because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. so the Teddy Ursa is... Uh, we the stat requirements we do are like you basically want above average attack and speed, and then everything else is sort of whatever. Um, there's some nature shenanigans also with purification. Um, but thankfully it doesn't affect EXP the way it does in Kalo. Um, Shadow Pokemon in this game always gain. I don't know the percentage of EXP, but they gain a percentage of all EXP constantly instead of uh like having it dependent on uh their heart gauge or like how purified they are so the only real issue with uh purification in this game is um like you'll notice that my teddy Ursus is nowhere near being pure being ready to purify but i have to purify it at the end of this segment so there's uh items called scents in this game um and they just lower the heart gauge a certain amount and that amount is uh, determined by what the nature is. So there's natures that just lose a bunch of time because you need to buy extra cents. You have to pick up extra items to sell for extra cents. You have to like get lucky and get a call to lower the heart gauge in the middle of a fight. Um, and it's really frustrating getting like uh, <laughs> like 
So two of the best natures stat-wise are Adam and Naughty, and they are two of the very worst for purifying. <laughs> so like sometimes you end up in a really frustrating situation where your stats are so so good and you like can't even continue the run because your nature sucks and you can't purify on time so there's like frustrating stuff with that in this game um, i think the teddy i had in this run was quirky which is like uh it's like average in terms of purifying um i have to go out of my way to grab a couple extra item boxes but it's like not bad um, and my IVs on, my IV on attack was 27 and my speed was 30. So like I was really good stat wise and like a mediocre nature. So the Teddy Ursa was really good for me. Uh, like the, the Espeon stats in this run, uh, there's, there's more of a focus on its defense, I think in this run, um, because later, uh, we are using Earthquake with Ursa Ring and you want to be able to live those you want to be able to live an earthquake crit um there's some stuff at the very end where uh you want espion to be able to take two hits from certain things um so espion's physical defense is uh, very important in this run but only really to the point where you need to be like solidly above average for it to live everything you want it to live with like a decent hp stat it's like nothing crazy but yeah uh xd is had like a lot of reroutes over the years which i think is interesting because um before we had manip probably like six ish five six years ago well i guess longer like six seven years ago before we had manip uh you know we just we just took like a plus special attack ev and ran with it um when we first had manip i believe the original hidden power we've been nipped for EV was fire just because we were like oh well it's fire it's type coverage it, it's good <laughs> and people didn't really think that much of it um for a really long time the standard ended up being hidden power electric on Espeon um because there's a lot of frustrating stuff later that's weak to electric uh there's like a Gyarados there's two Gyarados there's like um there's the Lugias, uh, the final fight has a bunch of flying types, like, so Hidden Power Electric was the standard for a very, very long time, um, and oh, I wish I had a better timeline on this, about three years ago, I believe it was like late 2020, um, Rafflegon came up with a route idea, which was to use Hidden Power Psychic on Espeon, and I think people didn't really take it seriously because they were like, oh, stab hidden power, you know. It's just sort of like a funny meme. But he ended up coming up with a full route and um, sort of... He made the, like, the very first hidden power psychic route. And it wasn't until probably a year and a half later that another runner, Ryzikin, um made his own version of the hidden power psychic route. Um, and then at, at that point, it sort of became the standard route that everyone started using. Um, Ryzkin implemented like some a uh, handful of fights he did slightly differently, and he did some a slightly different experience route because the original Hidden Power Psychic route sort of copied the experience route of the previous Hidden Power Electric route, and Ryzkin changed the way some of that was done. Um, I ended up using, the route I ended up using was the original Hidden Power Psychic route with a handful of fights done differently taken from the newer Hidden Power Psychic route. Uh, just because the older route uh, had some unoptimal stuff in it just because it was like the very first uh, like draft of Hidden Power Psychic. So yeah, I don't know. XD is weird to me because I never played it that much. Um, Literally, I started playing this game because my friend Roth was like, he's like, I have a Hidden Power Psychic Road, I want you to test it. And I was like, yeah, sure, man, whatever. <laughs> so, like, I literally just did a handful of attempts with that. I, like, put the game away. And I didn't really come back to it until probably three-ish months ago um, when I started, like, trying to push for a better time. Um... 
yeah the funny thing about this run i think was like <laughs> the the time i'm comparing against that 424 was um that was my record i already got and then i for some reason i thought it was a good idea to keep playing this game i'll never i'll never know why i did that i ended up beating it by almost three minutes which is good <laughs> but i don't know this this game is so so weird and so frustrating because like it's it's just it might, maybe it doesn't seem that much longer than Coliseum because it's only about an hour longer, but it feels so much longer, and it's very frustrating. And it, it has fewer runners than Call of does a bit, and uh, I think it's just because there's so much more variance, so much more random stuff in this run. Because, like I said, base, the 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 opposing AI is almost completely random, uh, even when it is like picking optimal moves it still picks a random target and it's very very frustrating because we don't have like consistent ways to play around certain things like there's a handful of fights where uh opposing pokes have fake out and so they'll fake out a random poke and there's no good way to play around stuff like that. but um yeah I don't know, i'm trying to remember more about this run uh I remember it ended up being like a it was a very good beginning and then the ending was really good and the sort of midsection that was kind of decent good not great you get any uh, crits that saved a bunch of time i don't remember getting a bunch of crits i do remember at the very beginning i got so uh our evie's initial move said is what tackle tail whip bite and oh well i'm putting the counter on right now there it is it's tack <laughs> tackle tail whip bite and sand attack um and basically that means we use a lot of bite <laughs> you can see me using bite this whole segment because it's the only move i have that does any meaningful damage and so a consequence of that is we have a ton of chances to save time with flinches <laughs> so you can just like luck into a bunch of time save early with bite flinches which is like it, it's funny when it works out but it's usually just frustrating yeah, uh, I know. I know in white too. At the end, like we rely on flinching a lot with our moves. <laughs> it's uh, not great. Not great. <laughs> it's it sucks when you don't get them. Yeah. Yep. Um There's like. Yeah. Um, so in this game, like, uh, shadow poke, shadow Pokemon have like a bunch of different shadow moves, and shadow moves are super effective on non-shadow pokes. So like every shadow poke in this run almost is like a threat to really hurt us <laughs> for like a large <laughs> portion of this run they also introduced a lot more shadow moves in this game compared to the first game which is just absolutely wonderful shadow end is a very great move i should know the base power of shadow end i should probably i think it's like 120. i think it's 120 also um it's either 120 or 150. It's a it's a pretty high yeah, damaging move. I think it's either 100 or 120, but I think it's 120. Yeah. It has 60 accuracy. Thanks, game devs. It's a uh, it's a run killer. Uh, for the end of the run. It's yeah, the last fight. So, uh, the f the funny thing about this, like, it's it's a really long run. Uh, it's random everywhere, so it's really frustrating. And if you manage to make it to the very end of the run, uh, your combined win rate for the final two fights is uh, about fifty percent, which is uh, it's it's something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, I want to see the go to the fight before this because that's when it really starts. It's it's so frustrating. Well, the you, you like. All the the actual like the train fight the before. one before this the trainer before this. it should be some red hair guy yeah oh it's yeah boy elvis yeah um so the elvis fight sucks because um he leads with the ninja asking a manic trick and the poke that is sent out after the manic trick is a salamence uh the manic trick and salamence are shadows so uh we can't give them turns we can't give the shadow pokes turns because they'll either do a ton of damage or use a move called shadow sky which wastes a million billion years approximately so we <laughs> give the ninjask turns and if the ninjask decides to attack the espion a bunch uh your espion will crumble and die 
though this fight this fight's not terrible there's a small number of things that can go wrong unfortunately we give the opponent a lot of turns i think it's like three or four turns to attack depending on how the fight goes um and if you get crit by like any of them almost you're screwed unless like it's a silver wind on earth ring that's like the only crit in this fight that doesn't like absolutely ruin you so like this fight itself is pretty awful it has probably like a around a three and four to win it's very frustrating to have like something like this at the very end like <laughs> that's why we've 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 had people look into like some EXP routing stuff for this game, but like we we kind of need to be at like a really high level because even at our high level, we're taking so much damage because every shadow poke hits us super effectively. Um, but yeah, and then after this, uh, the final fight, um, it's calculated to about a sixty percent win rate, which is awesome. You know, you play for four and a half hours and then you're like a little more than the coin flip to actually finish the run and the reason for that is the game devs thought it'd be really funny to give the final boss uh the legendary bird trio <laughs> uh so he just has Moltres, zapdos articuno which do uh way too much damage um he also has what tauros right on and executor like everything yeah. does a ton of damage so the way we do this fight is we <laughs> well, I mean, turn one, it's a, you, you basically, you kill the non-legendary birds and non-executor with a non-boosted psychic. And then uh, Earthstring has fake tears, which comes in handy and is uh, our way to one hit kill the, um, the legendary birds. We just minus two their defense or their special defense. I really like the move sets, uh, especially in this in this route, particularly because Espeon gets Psychic, Hidden Power, Psychic, uh, Bite, and it keeps Sand Attack. Funny enough, uh, <laughs> we we end up never needing that move slot, so we just keep Sand Attack, which I think is funny. Uh, Ursaring, its its original move set is Return, Refresh, Lick, and Metal Claw. It ends up being Return, Hyper Beam, Fake Tears, Earthquake. So it gets like a nice little revamp. Um, but yeah, uh, on, so the reason this fight's funny is Executor, we give Executor three turns. Um, it has a move called Shadow End. It does 120 damage, uh, has 60 accuracy. And uh, so this game, it, it picks a random target with its moves. So if in those three turns, it targets the same poke twice and hits uh you just lose and you can do nothing <laughs> uh, um it's really dumb so you you just you just hope it splits its targets or misses because there's nothing else you can do but uh okay motor vehicle sorry uh but like on top of that like everything in this fight almost everything in this fight i believe is a range uh, i believe ride on is not guaranteed to psychic i believe tauros is not guaranteed to psychic at minus two uh after fake tears um moltres is a range with hidden power zapdos is a range with hidden power and articuno is a range with psychic uh so literally like everything in this fight is a range which just like drops the win rate even further um it's just it's just so awful <laughs> it's just genuinely awful I, I have nothing good to say about this fight this man's a menace fair and balanced fight it's, it's just ridiculous like we have to give the executor turns here because it's, it's the only thing that can miss its move <laughs> Like everything else two hits us, but is guaranteed to hit. It's pretty funny. And good thing it uh picks a random target too. Yeah, well there's there's a PP management coming in handy again. <laughs> we use <laughs> we use our last psychic. That's the reason we don't use psychic on like Moltres and uh or uh, Zapdos. We just don't have the psychics for it. The PP management in this in this route, I love the PP management. Like we have like perfect PP for like three or four segments it's 
it's really it's really really well done because we use our last psychic there uh what is it uh when we enter a key layer cypher key layer earlier we use our last hidden power return and hyper beam uh right as we get to a heal machine um in phoenix city in like the first half we use our last uh hidden power uh right before we get to a heal machine and in like very early on like the second segment of the run uh we have like two we have like zero one or two returns left at the end of that segment so like there's a ton of really cool pp management uh in this run and i really enjoy that aspect of it I don't know. What, what, what are you guys curious about with this game? This game just frustrates me. I don't know. Why do you run this? Well, I don't <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the one shame, like with XTB and like well, I mean, like you said, it's like close to four hours. But like for a, a person first picking it up, it's probably looking like close to five. I think that was yeah, around yeah. the time I got when I tried it. And oh, I don't, I, I don't doubt it's fun casually. Um, oh yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's much better than Coliseum casually, but like I yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. I, I cannot stand Coliseum casually, but I I'm love it as a speed run. I'm currently doubting. What do you I'm an mean? XD hater. An XD hater. I don't like it. Okay, well I haven't played XD, so I have no opinion. There you go. I do have an opinion. It's an amazing game. It is oh, your opinion is different than mine. It is the second <laughs> best side game, arguably, compared with Pokemon Dash, maybe edging it. I've had it with this guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. There's a lot of uh, complaints I had about Coliseum casually that I've told people, and they said, "Yeah, XD kind of fixes that." Um, so someday I'll have to play this game. No, you really don't. Yeah, I really do. Yeah, you really do. Um, interesting. Is it Snazzle One or Snazzle Two? That's obviously both. They're like uh, mostly Snazzle of... One. So Snazzle One is in Phoenix. Uh, it's like the final fight. Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, it's a weird fight because um, yeah. So he leads Lantern and Quagsire. And uh, we're too low level to kill things in one hit at this point, so we basically just set up and let him attack us. And we actually buy guard spec because uh, this Quagsire has a weird weight and it's AI that caused it to like use uh, Rock Tomb a lot, even though it has uh, a stronger moves or it has a stronger move. So it'll almost always use uh, Rock Tomb even after the guard spec. And while you're setting up here, you basically just hope that he splits his targets in such a way that you don't have to like waste a bunch of healing items, or that he just like misses Rock Tomb. But this guy he seems to always hit his Rock Tombs, and it makes me very angry. Should just get one shot uh, miss. Yeah, we end up like uh, setting up before we kill anything. Uh, the, the problem is that Lantern does like no damage to Espeon, but it does a ton of damage to uh, Tadirsa. So. <laughs> Like, if, if it just decides to target the, the Teddy or a bunch, you just have to, like, burn two super potions and lose, like, a minute, and it's very annoying. I find it funny that you don't want them to bully your bear early game, but late game, you're like, yeah, please bully my bear some more. <laughs> yeah, because, like, uh, I'm like, Teddy or is just, it, it's so, it's so frail, he's just a tiny little bear. But, you know, by the end of the game, he's, like, similar level to the opposing pokes, he's, a uh, big bulky bear, you can take the hits well, and Espeon's like a frail little, I have no defense, leave me alone. But Yeah, uh, I mean, I always found the main for this game like quite intriguing, because I usually find the, the mains for uh, some of these games really interesting when it's more like an unconventional main that you don't normally see. Like, you probably wouldn't think that Teddy Ursa is just the fastest thing in this game. I mean, that's not the first thing I would think of. I wouldn't know what I'd think of for something well, like a game like this, but... There is a handful of reasons. There's many, many reasons why Teddy Ursa is so much faster than any other option. It is genuinely not close. 
Um, one is that Teddy Ursa is, so I mentioned it, like, call it, Makuhita is a guaranteed catch. Uh, in this game, Teddy Ursa is the first possible shadow. It is also a guaranteed catch, except you are forced to catch it. <laughs> um, and you are forced to purify a Pokemon before leaving Agate at the beginning. So your only options to purify are, uh, but to that point, are the Teddy Ursa that you are forced to catch, or a Ladybug and a Poochiena, which are very far out of the way. So first, you just don't have any good options. You're forced to purify something, and Teddy Ursa just happens to be the uh, easiest thing to purify. Um, that's one. Two is that if you were to run anything else, you would have to uh, catch it after uh, purified in battles and then go all the way back to Agate, use Sense on it, purify it, and it's like even if something like a different shadow... It's a lot of backtracking. Even if a different shadow was like two minutes faster, it would not be faster because of how much it takes to go purify it. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing by itself. Another thing is that uh, Teddy Ursa's moveset is just like really really good it comes with return so it has a stab move immediately and by the time that like i think at this point in the run that's being shown it's uh it's at like 82 84 base power already so like it, it becomes really powerful really quickly um and that you know normal is like, uh maybe people don't think of it this way it's it's a good offensive type because it hits so much neutral um so it's really really useful uh, but the the big one is uh, fake tears. Fake tears is just so so huge. If you don't have fake tears for the end game, like it's it's just it's so hard to do anything. Cause like you, the way that the exp works is that you're gonna have like one poke significantly stronger than the opponent, and one poke similar level to the opponent. And so, you know, if for instance, I think the second fastest. Uh, like secondary is a Mareep you catch so if you had like say an Ampharos you would like the way you would have to do fights is that Espeon tries to one hit KO stuff and then Ampharos like two hit KOs other stuff and it's like it's it's just so bad it's so so bad when instead we can do stuff like on the Eldest fight we use fake tears on the Shadow Salamence and now Espeon can KO stuff you know, if that was Ampharos there Ampharos would be like standing there asking for its mommy can't kill anything but uh yeah Ursaring uh just is so so much better than anything I will never ever capture that ladybug again in my life leave me alone right <laughs> ladybug can't hurt you it's not real it isn't real it doesn't exist I'm gonna light it on fire yeah, I know I've gotten the question a lot while writing Coliseum about switching mains, but yeah, the backtracking is just... <sighs> just, it's just... It's too, it's so, it's so much time to just oh, do it, something it, like that. Next, it's just, it's egregious. Like, the funny yeah. thing is that, like, Teddy Ursa purifies, like, slower than, like, every other shadow until, like, the second half of the game. Like, for some reason, they made, pure, they made Teddy Ursa, like, really, really difficult to purify. Uh, but like you're, you're you're forced to purify something, so it's still way way better than it, any other option. Even the ladybug that you could get. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, even better than the ladybug. You you sound so disappointed saying that. I don't want to talk about the ladybug. <laughs> I don't know, it evolves pretty early. Stab area lace looking awfully nice. Mm -hmm. I remember correctly, don't you have to like turn the bridges to get to that? Yes. Well, you don't have to turn them to get to the lady, but you have to turn them to get to Pooch. Alright. But it's like this whole detour anyway. Yeah. Like it's like it's like a minute there and back to or like overall. If you want to just like get to the trainer that has it, and then you're doing an extra fight, you're catching something, it's like, yeah, dude, everything yeah. Shadow Bar is shorter than Bear. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, Ryzen's making good points. I you disagree. Even get some pizza for it. 
Mm, not worth. <laughs> when pe people have like tried coming up with like alts for like the any percent, it's like anything that isn't Espeon Ursaring just like crumbles in the end game and can't do anything. Like some people have looked into like Jolteon. And Jolteon's okay because it gets Thunderbolt, which like can kill a lot of stuff, but like it's still significantly weaker than Psychic and Jolteon. Uh, is a, a big thing that I think people find, people forget in this game is like Espeon and Umbreon get the best stab moves. Like the like the Eevee comes with Bite, and the Espeon learns Confusion at level 15. Uh, everything else gets 40 power stab. So like, if you wanted to run Jolteon, you'd be stuck with like a Thunder Shock until like, what is it like the hour and a half markish? Like, you're stuck doing forty power as your main damage output for like a third of the run. You just like, and then <laughs> your your alternative after that is Thunder, which never hits because it's Thunder. And this we get we have fifty power stab very early. We get seventy power stab around the third mark and then about halfway through we get a TM for Psychic so like, we get all our moves really quickly and it just works out really well. We get Psychic for what like level 32 it's like really really good. And Jolteon meanwhile is like I can't hit Thunder and wah wah. Let me try using Thundershock <laughs> it kills nothing. Well isn't that what the Ladians for? Yeah I'm pretty sure uh, like Psybeam from a Ladian like does a lot of damage. Can, can I get a, like somebody? Can somebody tell me Ledian's special attack stat, please? Like thirty. <laughs> Not bad. Using that thirty. Hey, it's fifty-five. Okay. Oh, oh right. sorry. Okay, okay. Double. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. And it comes with aerial ace too. So good type coverage. Good type coverage. Air lace with that 35 attack. Oh, I got Ooh. swapped around. <laughs> but yeah, like, just, just, their, uh, Earth Rings and, uh, Espeon's movesets complement each other so well just because Fake Tears is huge and, like, the only, like, semi issue we run into type wise, type coverage wise, is, like, a handful of, like, dark types. Because if, if Earth Ring can't one shot a dark type, then Espeon is, like, crying there's like a couple mighty Ennas that have intimidate that are like annoying like yeah we also like uh, we get hyper beam also earlier and like we teach it as soon as teddy or so evolves so it's like we just have huge damage output from both our pokes like uh like by the halfway point and like any other option like uh the mareep example just because it's the second fastest like it's like what thunder punch when it evolves into ampharos it's like well thunder punch is fine but it's no hyper beam it's not even return damage and then it gets like no utility moves so it doesn't no earthquake no fake tears i just think oh, like, no. uh, this may be a question more for like one else but like is this the only rune that uses <laughs> it has to be surely. Double battles, baby. <laughs> yeah, we don't have fake tears on our Typhlosion. That's for sure. Yeah, there's there's a lot of times where Earth Ring just doesn't have a better option. It's it's mostly earlier. It's mostly like early game. Uh, this fight, there's a handful of fake tears. The fight after, and then like end game, there's generally not a lot of fake tears of that. But yeah, it's a super, super useful utility move, and I think people just, like, people want to look at other uh, mods to use in this game, like, totally overlooking how useful Fake Tears is. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to look into other Pokemon for, like, just fun old stuff to mess around with. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can't see, well, from the limited knowledge that you've spoken of, that you basically said, that is now my knowledge. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it just seems to make the most sense for FBL. See, the problem is the last two fights. Like, we can barely do it with our very best option. Like, anything worse is just so, so terrible. 
Why didn't you use Robo Ground on? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a pocket monster. I think it's just a suit. Yeah, but I don't I mean, know. It, it probably is in Black and White too. Considering well, Focus Star Studios. There's no Robo Ground <laughs> in the movies. No, but there's Robo Tyranitar. Oh. Yeah. I'm 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 mad that I seen this fight because this fight was like one of the three <laughs> things that went wrong in the run. So Every angry. time I see you get to this fight, I swear you just get screwed. Dude, this fight is Gyarados. This guy is a troll. He's he's fifty fifty to use bite and thrash, and uh, he likes to. He's spam bite against me because he thinks it's funny and then he flinches the teddy ursa because he only targets the teddy ursa because he's a bully. He flinched me twice. Made me cry. Did you put that <laughs> force bite it flinches? It was just... Uh, no. <laughs> those, those are only mine. <laughs> the problem with this is like if it... it the, the turn one flinch is the worst because if it flinches turn one uh, some floor uses sunny day and then... He has two pokes with chlorophyll, and then you have to kill those because they're gonna outspeed you. And then it's like giving the Gyarados extra turn, but it's the most dangerous poke in the field. And it's this whole ordeal. And it's like, God, just don't flinch on it. Just use Thrash one time. Just use Thrash. He's so mean. Because, like, the way this is supposed to go is I'm supposed to fake two as a Gyarados, and they can kill the Gyarados next turn. But Gyarados said no. Very angry at this Gyarados. Look at her bullying my bear. Very rude. <laughs> On the phone with someone talking about how much of a bully that Gyarados is, I see. Yeah, I had to tell all my friends about it. Look at him, he's just being a troll at this point. Seventy percent not to flinch, by the way. I guess you could. I just remembered. Uh, if you want to go to the next fight in the run, uh, there's uh, some cooler stuff that happens like in the next segment where um. Oh, like, oh. Some, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, talked about uh, like skipping fights by dying in Kalo. Uh, it was implemented in XD years before it was in Kalo. Um. There's a handful of. I think we skip. Is it four? We lose four fights in this run. Uh, there's one at like the hour and a half. There's two in this segment, and maybe that's it. I always forget the number because I've never played this game. It's me. But yeah, uh, I'm just attacking myself. It's it, this is like. These fights where we lose to save time are like the reason that we, we we struggled to come up with like a better EXP route is because we need Teddy Ursa to evolve so that we can lose these fights. It's it's really awkward, but like that's like the reason we haven't been able to come up with an EXP reroute for this game. Because there's another fight earlier that we know we can lose. There's a, two fights in Fenac we know we can lose. I think there's more in Fenac that we could lose, but we don't want to. Like, there's like, in Kala, we sort of got rid of all the fights that are, that we sort of really can without uh, just really sacrificing everything. XD has like some potential for a reroute, kind of. But we'd have to like, it'd, it'd be super awkward. We'd have to like, Finagle it so that like Teddy Ursa hits level 29 uh, after the Robo Groudon so that we can use a candy on it and get it to Ursa Ring for fights that we lose to. It's like. It's so awkward that I I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon, but like the, the, this game does have potential for it, whereas I don't think Kalo does have potential for like another reroute at this point. Now I go back to Croc. I said a reroute. Yeah! Reroute mm. back in Croc! Nobody's routed in lab skip for Croc yet. Mm, nobody will, because <laughs> nobody cares. You could be that person. Yeah, well, I don't care. Mm. 
Shane. I only run real categories, my apologies. <laughs> Wailing Miracle B percent. The most real category. <laughs> Uh, any other parts of this run that you can think of the top of your head? Like, I mean, like, there's some you. funny stuff. Like, uh, the segment after this segment is like, it's like the worst segment in the run just because um, there's a whole lot of return ranges. And so, the problem with this, like, a big problem with this uh, run is that. You know, it's unmanip secondary, uh, returns power varies, and um, yeah, so like the way it is is you're every step cycle you're 50 50 to gain a happiness point. So like your your friendship can vary, your return power can vary, your IVs vary, your nature varies, all this nonsense. And it all sort of culminates in this segment where there's a handful of uh, return ranges that are all favorable, but if you miss any of them, you just get completely dunked on. Uh, there's a gloom that like uh, is really annoying. There's a vile plume that's like stupid. There's a mantine range and they use a supersonic. Uh, in the segment, we intentionally take a hit from an electrode which uses spark, and if it paralyzes you, you lose a ton of time. Like. This segment is definitely like one of the two awful segments outside of Endgame. Like Phenac and this segment are just atrocious. Phenac has the same issue with ranges where like your return power is slightly varied and like uh, you're also hitting some hidden power ranges there too. There's there's one fight where like with average stats, uh they're, the two pokes that are led are like each a coin flip to die <laughs> and if you miss either of them they have like a bunch of annoying moves because one's a Torkoal, has ember can burn has fire spin which is slow has body slam which can paralyze there's a nuzleaf which can dig which is slow it has torment which can screw you over it's like oh it's just so 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 terrible that segment also has a random fake out it has double team users it's just Terrible, terrible, terrible. It just seems yeah. like so many things in this room that are not great. <laughs> this is... It's it's so, so much more frustrating than Kala is because in Kala, usually, you know, other than like dying to a crit or missing a fire blast, anything that goes wrong is usually your fault. In this game, um... The game can just decide to end you <laughs> at a lot of points in time. Like, just the random AI makes this run so frustrating. And then you gotta get a renewable Teddy Oster again. 15%. I think right now it's about a 1 in 8 to get a renewable. That's, that's uh, yeah, good. compared to Kolava's <laughs> like 42%, roughly. I don't know. Who, who comes up with these numbers? These aren't accurate. I disagree. All right, sorry. Forty percent is that better? Uh, I don't mean you. I just mean that I, I just I, I'm annoyed with the numbers we come up with, and I don't trust them. <laughs> it's I would say it's roughly forty percent for Quill. Oh yeah, the the, the EV evolution earlier. We're like, uh, was it when you hit level eleven? You're a five and sixteen to evolve into Espeon. And then when you hit level 12, you're a 15, 16 to evolve into Espeon. And if you evolve early, you save like 30 seconds to a minute. And if you miss the second one, your run is dead because you can't do the fights. <laughs> it's just... Uh, this game. <laughs> a whole lot of step cycle luck, which is really, really dumb. I think that's the first time I've heard about ranges for evolution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what the base friendship for Eevee is in this. It's like really close to its evolution. Uh, but yeah, uh, after your first level up, it's only 5 and 16. This game is so funny. 
Yeah, there's some other stuff with like uh, with Teddy Ursa's friendship. I routed in a couple extra X attacks uh, while you're holding Sued Bell because uh, X items raise friendship. So I ended up routing that into sort of try to help offset some of it a little bit, but it's like so, it, it changes so little <laughs> that it's just. It's like calcium on Typhlosion. Nothing. Oh, well, that's different because it actually changes the stat. We, we're, talking about, <laughs> we're talking about changing one variable in the move's power. Yeah, I know. It's just like funny. It, the, the X attack friendship only like benefits you if it's like com combined with like lucky step cycles. <laughs> it's like it offsets it a bit if you're unlucky, but like not really. It's, it's what the two extra X attacks are like what two extra or four extra happiness points? I don't know. Yeah, it's, not, it's almost like something insignificant. I know it's, I, I, feel, I don't know why it's for Gen 3. I know Gen 8, I think, is a bit better, but you also don't need to care about it so. Not as important, or well, it isn't important to anyone. Well, you can't just lose a run because you get one in sixteen non-step cycles. <laughs> no, you, you died to many other one in sixteens. Nice. <laughs> like critical hits. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is one thing. Uh... Crits are one in twenty-four. <laughs> oh, they, well, yeah, they are one in twenty-four. Uh, wait, yeah. <laughs> oh wait, right for Jet Eight. I forgot yeah, you were talking eight. about Jet Eight. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, not Jet Eight. I mean, you uh, fooled me for a second. Like, <laughs> just brought up a repressed memory where I was on 423 pace on Eldis and I died to a crit. Oh, no. I'm so glad I could bring up that memory for you. <laughs> I'm not. It's okay. You have a 421 now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that fixes it. Uh, I think that does. Get... You need to get some 420 to fix it. I'm still mad. No, I refuse to play this game. You can't make me. <laughs> hey, look, nice crit there, speaking of crits. Yeah, it was so useful. It helped a lot. <laughs> uh, critical hits. I'm kind of glad that they uh, nerfed them later, but they're funny. Funny isn't the word I'd use. <laughs> they're funny when you get them. Oh, I totally forgot. Yeah, this, what, this run I think missed, what? I did miss three Hyper Beams. It was stupid. On average, you'd only miss like one, and I missed like three, and it was, it was like... Well, I think like three things went wrong. I, I like had a death earlier, uh, I missed Hyper Beams, and I got flinched a bunch. Concept looks a lot less goofy in this game than he does in the. Okay, never mind. He zoomed in on the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was gonna no say one. he looks less goofy, and then they zoomed in. I'm like, all right, never mind. Like the only other thing I really remember about this run was like, the first hour was really really good. So that Lavrina segment, I think that was my first one or three I'd ever had. So a really good beginning, and then. So the final area in this is called Citadark Isle, and I think I had the fastest entire citadel uh ever by like a minute like <laughs> just ridiculous absolutely stupid ending i see you missed hyper beam there yeah well if the bear didn't have sand in its eyes <laughs> also what are you lying to me are you gaslighting me i wasn't paying attention i was partially paying attention but i thought i saw a move miss so You're definitely gaslighting me because uh i didn't use hyper beam Oh, okay, never mind. How could you? You missed something. I just didn't I most see what. I did not. Was... Hey, okay, never mind. Maybe I'm just lying. <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> it's just spreading misinformation on the internet. <laughs> I'm doing a really good job fun. at this, as you can tell. Don't use Hyper Beam here. <laughs> Last time I checked, Return had 100 accuracy. Hmm. Sorry, I forgot that Sword Shield Runners wouldn't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm not a Sword and Shield Runner. You ran Shield. I ran Shield once, and I will never run it again. 
Pokemon Shield specials. I don't blame you. <laughs> Look, I've already had to deal with uh, Drillbur catch rate in White 2, and it's just worse. <laughs> it's worse in every way. <laughs> Shield. Just, just run Candy Floss. No, no, don't suggest that. <laughs> Why are those cuts funny and adorable? Uh, isn't Candy Floss Sword exclusive? Uh, no, you can do both. Right. You can do both, yeah. Uh, okay. I've almost done all my shield runs with Candy Floss. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think I will stick to not as, uh, not Coliseum. As, not as good in shield, though. That's what do you mean, stick to Coliseum? Coliseum sucks. Look, it's at least not Sword and Shield. I'm sorry, Sword and Shield runners. I, I, I am not a Sword and And then also catching <laughs> Meditate. I love my 41% catches. They're rule. Every yeah, time you miss I like a catch, my, you uh, 30 seconds. I it's like awesome. I have to weaken Trilber so much just to actually have a decent chance of catching it because the game is so messed up when it comes to if a Pokemon is higher level than you, it significantly reduces the oh, catch yeah. rate. Funny. But have you considered getting lucky? No, I haven't. Sorry. Just try that. It might help. Better so I Should consider getting a minus attack drillber with like two IV attack. Better player would have gotten a better drillber. Exactly. Yeah. Better player would have manipped it. Uh -huh. A better player would have been sold. Actually, that. Also true. <laughs> anyway, Sobble think... and shield? Uh, it actually has a root for it. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> like, huh. it might be a bit... I think it's slower than Dark Knight Jill, but, but... It's more consistent, but by that point, you just ruin Candy Floss and shield, I think. Memory serves me correctly. One time I told someone to teach an Excadrill Home Clause as a joke, which means I've contributed to sword speedruns somehow, in some way. We teach- no, it comes with it in White 2, we don't teach it. Not that one, wrong game. Oh, uh, well. I don't know anything about that game. Look, I don't know yeah, I'm no just here to Gen shield Gen 5, so... You have a Tepig, your bike moves really fast, I don't know. <laughs> hey, you bike oh. Drillbur now. We'll put this black point one. Yeah, I think at this point, the fact that we're talking about the other games, <laughs> now is the perfect time to go to a break. I have nothing nice to say about XD. It is a great game casually. Oh. It sounds like a very interesting speedrun. Um. We'll leave out that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, put it to break. Have the uh, have a highlight video ready to go with some of the stuff that happened in the past month. Do some, even including some of the people in here. So no way. Yeah, no way indeed. So yeah, we will be right back. And welcome back, everyone. I did not give anyone else notice to say hello, <laughs> so I am doing it for everyone else. <laughs> oh, um, good. Yeah, so, this is actually a question to everyone, because I haven't really had too much time over this past month to check if anything has been happening. Has anything happened uh, with any of the, like, the leaderboards or anything along that line? Um, I have nothing. I can't there was, there was I think a... There was a oh, minor on. vote in the uh, in the switch for uh, Scarlet and Violet for single or single story save files in terms of your starter move set, but that was pretty minor. Fair enough. What is the what was the vote in the end? Uh, you can have whatever move set you want on your on your starter for the for the uh, single stories, provided it's part of their learning like move set up till like level. Nine or level ten, which is the level you can be, you need to be at. Um, but you can start with like a, just one move in your move set, which is like Thiefage or something. If you're running Cat, for example. Uh, previously, um, there was nothing explicitly specified, so most people were just um, they just had three moves in their move slot. It would be like Scratch, 
growl or whatever, and then their uh, their stab move. So, uh, um, but yeah, that's yeah that that wasn't really specified before, but now it has been. Well, having that clarification is important. Uh, but yeah, in that case, I think it's let's go into the note runes and actually, I I guess he'll be leading off with you. Yeah, we just have one uh, one run from the Gen 1 to 3, and that's uh, Pokeguy's yellow any percent record with 118.19. Um, yeah, as you could probably imagine if you've ever watched an any percent run, it's very, very short. And uh, I don't know too much about the specifics in terms of this, but there's a triple input. I believe it's it must be a manipulation of some sort. Um, oh, I was I can like explain it a little bit. It's like I was there. Yeah, was doing these attempts. Um, yeah, it involves like hitting the manip at the start, but then like also like a pokey guy didn't realize until like he got this run or like un about close to when he got this run that like that he needed to like do the triple input like before then he was like huh why are my runs like not fast enough and then like once he realized it it clicked in his head and he got it um i, I don't know where the triple input is to be quite honest I, I i've already guessed it's like close to the end i'm not sure but yeah um, not familiar with the yellow any percent but the triple input is what helped him get there I mean, but yeah, we can watch the run because it's so short. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, we may as well just like leave it on. Uh, this is actually a good time to quickly mention. There was actually something in uh, the Color and XD League Awards where uh, they got new mods. Like they've had their mod vote. The oh, yes. The ball mods for, for those categories and games. Apparently, like, there's so few applicants that everybody who applied were just brought on without a vote. Yeah, that's that's not too uncommon. I think uh, Switch did that. Uh, yeah, for their most recent one. Being a leaderboard mod is difficult and time-consuming. Thanks, Charles. We are very thankful that people do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there you go. The that's the run. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's quite a sizable improvement on the record because, like you know, normally you're beating this by frames at a time. He beat it by, like, a handful of frames. Pretty good. Congrats, Poke Guy. Does Poke Guy have the other any percent world record, or is that Rogier now? I think Rogier got Red. both of them. And then yeah. this is Poke Guy taking one back, at least. Fight for the top. Love to see it. All right. Um, so nothing this month in the the ds camp um in terms of uh, new records and things like that um and this is the one run for 3ds uh, so this is truly getting a new second place time uh in pokemon x y uh here we're showing probably the the low light of the run uh death here to clement um lost a, a good chunk of time about like almost a minute um yeah but was able to crawl it back. Ended up doing a uh, protein skip. I guess I'm not too, too familiar with the updated XY route, I but can... my yeah, you go for it. <laughs> yeah, um, so protein skip is uh, basically like, well, something that was previously done. And then we added in buying six proteins at Laver so that, you know, you don't have to go through like ranges on all three of the, or three of the four Gyaradoses in the game, specifically Lysander 1 and 2 and Seabold, along with a couple of other things. So basically skipping protein saves 20 or so seconds throughout the run, and you just have to hit like a 14, 16, 15, 16, and a uh, 6, or like a 12 and 16 with a Rock Tomb. And normally those are all guaranteed, except for Seabold, which is a 15 and 16. So it's an obvious risk, but... Um, he decided, truly decided to skip proteins to secure his 340 pace, and that was his ultimate goal, and he got it. And uh, this is second place. Yeah. 
it's um still about a minute off of head bob's run i think uh, maybe a little bit less and then uh i think it's nine seconds nine or ten seconds away from war tab who is in now in third place yeah so lots of i know war has been doing runs so there might be more movement at the top of the at the board um mm -hmm. but xy is always a weird run just because it's Sometimes we'll go months without hearing anything about it, and then all of a sudden it'll be like, here's a new first place, here's a new second place. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just when the game decides games. to be nice. Yeah. And give you runs, give you chaw. Like looking at the looking at the Halucha's stats, like the Halucha's not even great. Like it's not bad by any like Yeah, it's, I mean it's about as, average. Yeah. If it's not terrible, then it's like they're all kind of kind of alike, so you know, like, for example, bad speed or bad attack. Or just too bad defense that you can't get past Grant. Also, yeah. we, were miss we were talking about missing friendship thresholds uh, for the XD run. This was another game we should have talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You you need to get lucky with some friendship rolls so that you get lucky egg. Um, if you don't reach that, then you have to lose some time just biking around. But luckily, truly got that this run. That was one of his um, major time losses in his PB before this. But um, yeah, it's, a, it's honestly a solid run up to Cha. Definitely, definitely good there. And um, Kamont's really the only terrible thing that's happened. So, yeah, very good run. Congrats. That's truly. This run. All right. Um, so making my job easy for the Switch games, two of the three runs are by people on the podcast today. Uh, Jordan, tell us about this run. Uh, this was a really good run. And then we got to this fight, which is like the last fight that you can really have an issue, at least because I bring all the second Pokemon. Got a token tomorrow, which is nice, 5%. Um, but I healed full. And then I just get crit by Dragon Pulse. Oh. And this was... This was safely 4 or 5 paces. Might have even have pushed the 4 or 4. Um, and yeah, it just... Um, honestly, like... When it's something like that, that doesn't bother me as much. Because it, it happens. It's not the first time I've been crit by this Eternatus. I'm used to it. Um... But like my previous PV where I did a missed input, stuff like that annoys me more. So like this, I mean, yeah, obviously it's not ideal, but um, yeah. You, you, I can, I can keep going. I know I can get these paces again. I've done like twice now at this point. Um, I'm just gonna do like, actually, first things first. This soul ball is terrible. Uh, well, it's fast, but it's terrible. <laughs> twenty, like twenty three. I the lowest I will take is twenty IV for special attack. And like, I'm I'm upset if I'm taking 20. Like internally, I'm upset because that's like a 12 and 16. This is barely 15 and 16 on uh, Milo, the Milo fight. Okay. Um, but I had a, I had a very like very good start, which I mean it shows I'm behind. That's just because my previous PB was ridiculous, but like a, a 58 13 uh, Milo. Did I? Fight the Onyx and beat the Onyx? I might have. I did not know. Never mind. But still, like, it's a very, very, very good start. And it kind of carried on through. It's just. If you want to get really, really consistent, quick times, you kind of need to be positive special attack. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> so you can skip the rare candy and then hope everything goes well. Uh, I think in this fight I got detected as well. That was like one of the other main time losses that I had in this run, just getting detected a lot. Um, but yeah, I think that's really everything. This run could be better. But I feel like every speedrunner says that, even with world records, unless it's like the perfect run. Yeah, like a poker guy with uh, red, for example, maybe. And I feel like this is the fate of every good sword shield run. Yeah. Dies to Eternatus. 
Yeah. Getting tired of seeing it. To be quite honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Back to you, Erica, for Scarlet Violet. All right. Um, so this is the first of two Scarlet Violet runs we're going to show. Uh, this is Carolio getting the Japanese any percent glitchless record uh, with a 522.39. Uh, I think we talked about Carol last last time. Um, they've been slowly chipping away at the time um, because the game is so long. It's really hard to to compare like how the run was between like the English and the Japanese record. Um, but it is worth mentioning that this is the first Japanese record that is actually faster than the English record, uh, which is more impressive because the Japanese run includes credits and actually includes the intro as well. So um, there's a lot of the oh, wow. extra time that, you know, English doesn't have to do that, you know, is still counted here. Um, but yeah, just sort of leafing through the run, it seemed like um, it was a pretty good Flamigo. Uh, lost a bit of time on like the Tatsugiri section, uh, which is the final Titan that you fight. Um, and then was able to save a lot of it back during the Starfall bases and then the end game. Um, like if you if you skip ahead, like maybe 45 minutes, um, you'll see like they're even with their PB for a long stretch of time. Um, yeah. they're even even behind a little bit. Uh, but then, like I said, end up sort of crawling back during the star bases at the end of the badge hunt. And then um, even more so like getting into end game stuff like, i think they save like 20 seconds on this gym alone um another thing people always ask uh just because the communities are fairly split uh the route is pretty much the same as the english route uh there are some minor differences they do a lot of uh anyone who's familiar with the run we sort of break up the candy hunt um into one section and then go fight orthworm and do a couple gyms and then do the rest of the candy hunt they kind of do all of the candies at once and then go fight orthworm um, I feel like it should be slower, uh, just because it adds an extra fly. Um, it adds one fly, saves one menu, but, um, they've been consistently doing it. So maybe they know something we don't. And, um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a great time. Like I said, I think maybe a month ago, the time was like a 525 maybe. Um, so this got chipped down quite a bit since then. again i guess i i am best to talk about this one yeah i was gonna say iron take this one away yeah so this is <clears throat> this is uh starfall street this is actually um it's the number one time on the leaderboard but there is a run that is faster than this by crisis using flamigo um oh. but uh on from the leaderboard we can say that we've beaten flamigo uh <laughs> at least for now um i'm using uh duck for this run um so a bit of so I've talked I've probably talked a bit about this before, but a bunch of us have tried so many different mains for this category. It's still not really settled which one is faster, but um, Duck is kind of interesting. Um, this fight here against Penny, I messed it up pretty badly. Um, I don't remember exactly how, but it did not go well. But um, really, this Duck's good. You don't have to catch anything other than. Um, I actually catch a static Luxio and then evolve it with six medium candies to Luxray for the bases. Um, and that's really good because if you have to use the vending machines to heal uh, in the star barrages, it's very slow. Um, but Luxray is able to survive most of it. And then your other Pokemon you use is the pig. And if that dies, it's not a big deal. Uh, but it can live, which is really good in some cases. Um, there's definitely a there's definitely some improvements that I'm looking to make to this still. Um, I haven't had a chance to recently, but I definitely would like to do that. Um, one thing I was doing in this run is I was using, if you go to, if you try to find the uh, airy fight, which is the first base. So if you want to go back yes, to around the 31 minute mark. Oh, do you want to be early? Yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm using Wave Crash a lot. Wave Crash is a really strong move, but you take recoil damage. And so I'm not too sure if it's faster, but I can set up less and actually use Torrent. The rain actually doesn't 
would actually it actually doesn't really matter here but um, I'm actually going to be using wave crash and torrent here on the on the car and my duck will faint <laughs> but I'll still win the fight you don't get experience from these fights and then what I do is I because you don't get a free heal until you enter the next base and do the next barrage I fight the next base it's one of the easier bases and Luxray is able to fight the uh, the fight you do outside, which is either Houndor or Murkrow. Um, and it's able to handle that, no problem. Um, so that's kind of an, uh, an interesting thing I, I did there. The alternative doing, to doing Wave Crash there is you'd have to set up an extra turn, and then the Lucario has a pretty slow move. It'll probably use Dragon Pulse, which is kind of slow. Um, I haven't timed it out, but it seems like it's decently, decently, decently fast. But... Um, where this run was really good was I did not... I had like a perfect Ortega fight, so if you want to scroll or go ahead a little bit more, maybe like 10 minutes ahead. I don't want to spend too long on this, but uh, go back a to the beginning of the fight. So this fight's really bad. It's the fairy base. Um, Flamigo has this issue. Um, actually, I don't think the fight went well. I think the barrage went really well here, but... This fight's really, really bad. Um, his lead knows Charm, which is a Zoomerill. If you get Charmed, it's really bad. Well, there's two different ways to do this fight. You can set up a guard spec and hope he uses Charm, or you can not set up a guard spec and hope he, hope he uses Play Rough. Uh, but if you do the guard spec strat, it's more set up because you're using an extra X item. In this run, I think I played around him hoping that he would use Play Rough. And he ended up using it, so I didn't have to do any weird setup here. Because if he does, if you do set up the X attack, and then he uses play, he uses Charm, you have to do some weird shenanigans to um, to try to win the fight, and it's really slow. So because Play Rough does over half here, uh, so this is a problem Flamigo has as well. The Flamigo run actually terastalizes on this fight in order to avoid um, to, to eliminate the fighting weakness to Fairy. Uh, and so that run actually requires you to have in the Flamigo, you need to have Flying Terra type when you catch your Flamigo. But Duck always has Water Terra, so you don't have to worry about that. And so this fight does something similar. I'm just going to, I got Play Rough right away, and then I can just kill everything. And I end up doing the same uh, strategy with uh, Wave Crash to kill here. Uh, this, this category has actually gotten a lot really, really spicy the last little while. We have three different Pokemon all under 130 now. Um, Spider today just got, or yes, yesterday I think, got sub 130 with Venomoth. And then, uh, of course, Crisis has a, uh, like a run that's about 18 to 20 seconds faster than this with Flamigo. So the jury is still not out as to which one of these mons is faster. So it's it's uh, it's very interesting. When did uh, Crisis do that run? Well, I wouldn't finish it. It was this past month, but for whatever reason, he didn't submit it. I'm not sure why, but yeah, fair enough. Maybe he's maybe he's trying to improve it more. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. Oh, there That's he is. Good. Yeah, he's just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough. <laughs> Understand that? Yeah. Uh, I I've got to ask. Uh, how's it feel using a, a main that has hot dog for toes? Like hot dog for toes. <laughs> Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> I know that it's it's quite a it's quite a controversial topic. I feel like Luxray yeah, being mentioned luxury. is just a W. The speed yeah, I like yeah, Luxray. Right. That's kind of cool. That does sound cool. Yeah, the, the 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 really big thing with this run is you ideally want to get through these barrages really fast. In order to do that, you don't want to have any of your mons faint. So ideally, you need higher level Pokemon. But the problem is to get higher level Pokemon, you have to pick up more candies and use more candies. And in my case, I have to do, I end up evolving my duck twice, Lux, Luxio once, and my pig once. <laughs> so I do, what is that? One, two, three, four evolutions. Uh, and pick up all these extra candies. But as a result, I have really good bases. Alternatively, you could just not put any candies on your other mons and do a lot of heals with the vending machine, which is kind of what Venomoth did, at least for the first few runs that Spider did. Uh, he'd just take 
Lechonk into the bases. And um, generally, if you have just two mons that are decent, you can you can make do here. But um, it's uh, if you have if you can get through without any of your Pokemon fainting, it's super huge. So that's kind of the balance you have to kind of strike when in routing this or, or trying to do runs is trying to figure out like, do you want to get the extra candies and take that extra time in order to save time in the bases later? Because the bases aren't consistent too. You can get different mons that show up and um, you could just have Pokemon fainting anyway. So it's 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 they're, they're not they're not uh, consistent in terms of what you see in the star barrages. So it's kind of a really neat run in that in that sense, just because it's so variable. That's interesting. Like, I guess like with uh, I mean. It'll... It's still up in the air, isn't it? I guess at the moment, if there's three competing routes, but do you have like a yeah, there's inkling, at least which one you think would be better. It's really hard to say. I know I, I think Crisis definitely could have saved more time on his run, and then this run had a bad Penny fight, but it also was really good prior to Penny. And then I think Venomoth had us a bit of time save left as well, so. You kind of have to have a lot of things line up. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think all of us probably could have some some better luck potentially uh, in all of our runs, but there's so many things that can pop up. You can just get random encounters, as you saw in the highlights video, which <laughs> could just derail things. So, um, yeah, these are probably going to be the top three mons, I would imagine. Although something else could could pop up as well. Um, I think between Spire and I, we've looked at like five or six different mains for this <laughs> so far. So there's there's lots of options, but um, we're kind of running out of ideas. You're obviously limited because you can't just catch something really high level and use it. You have to catch because you don't get any gym bat like um, like gym leader badges. You can only catch use things that were caught at level twenty or lower. So your your choices are a little bit limited. That's the, that is Wait, I guess this is an, I guess this is a this is a place where you get to see Lux Ray, so if you wanna oh. if you wanna show that. Um like natural thing. Yeah, go forward maybe a little bit there. But um oh, there oh there there it is. Yeah, so Lux Ray comes Luxio comes with Thundershock and Spark, so Spark it kills Murkrow. Or no, Spark kills Houndor and Thundershock kills Murkrow, so you have no difficulties uh, with that. Cool. And you do miss out on a bit of experience and EV and a couple EVs uh, on those two fights, the Houndor and the Murkrow, but it's so it's it's so relevant for the run because you're not doing too many fights anyway, so. I feel like you gain EVs on so little fights that like missing one or two here is not that big of a deal. Because, like, for anyone that doesn't know, you don't gain experience or EVs for any of, like, the star bosses. It's literally just the, uh, these entry fights into the bases. And then I guess also you get the EVs from Cl Clive as well. Or oh, yeah, Clive and Penny, so. yeah. Well, Penny yeah. wouldn't matter unless you level up mid-fight. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's... It's kind of an interesting. You don't have to worry too much about the EVs or anything like that. You kind of just figure out the level you need to beat everything, and then and then kind of go with that. Okay, cool. But yeah, I think that's what I think that's what it. I I, I tend to talk a lot about, about about runs like this, so um, it's a pretty fun run. Uh, I really like. I've, it's, it's the it's the category I started with when I started routing this game. So. Uh, it's definitely, I definitely got a soft spot for it, despite it being very inconsistent <laughs> compared to a lot of the other categories. Inconsistency is just variety. Even, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's, it's more interesting. Even if sometimes it feels a lot more annoying. At least in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, there's a let's go. You got a couple of the, uh, the or the stop and goes rather. <laughs> yeah. 
we'll now head over to the mystery dungeon section. So this is a problem that says mystery dungeon explorers of time, any percent and be dark right no one to mail emulated Japanese world records. Two world records for the price of one uh, submission. So the any percent was a 440.15 and then the be dark right uh, was a 716.09. So it was a, a Toastel Munchlax route and the main note that I have is that it it took uh, finding 10 special bands before finding the power band that you actually need during the run. Which, I don't have much context for it. But that just seems like terrible luck in any situation. If it's like the 11th try that you find something. So, that is the first one. The second one, a very rare game that we'll ever really, we'll never really see in the podcast. We ever have. Uh, Sorichin with the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon WiiWare and you sent uh, passwords Japanese world record which this is the first world record in the category since July 2020. As a fun little tidbit and it's I, don't, I have okay it's just it's another one of the, I don't know if anyone really knows about the, these games much outside of the few people that have run them. But, like, I guess just as a bit of context for the games themselves, these were like, these were released only in Japan. Like the Japan exclusive WiiWare titles. And there is an English translation, uh, translation that was released, uh, maybe like a couple of years or a few years ago. And like, people have done runs of them. But, but like, the, I guess official versions of these games they are only in Japanese so it's just one of those weird things I guess that like where there's like just some like some games are region exclusive like I know there's some like like trading card games and some of the games that are like that as well but yeah one more world record and uh, for Mystery Dungeon and for the side games in general this is SBD Wolves uh, Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity, any percent Wonder Mail, uh, 3DS slash 3DS, or new 3DS, sorry, English world record. So then 7 hours, 6 minutes, and 45 seconds. Which is apparently a run that they were, like, finally happy to get. Like, um, this is like the, uh, after, like, substantial reroute uh, from a few months ago, where I think the old partner was. I feel like it was Ivy or something, but it's, either way, it's now Oshawott, uh, and it'll use the wait there tactic, which will make the Oshawott stay there. Like, it's pretty self-explanatory, I guess that. Um, but it allows for more aggressive use of using Dragon Dance with Axu, and allows for more aggressive play, effectively, and uh, go through things quicker. Um, this run didn't find the reunion cape, which is like the one thing that was noted, which will uh, bring the I'll bring you, I think, to the uh, like to your partner Pokemon or like your your teammates, I guess, more accurately. So that would make this run a bit quicker, but although uh, a very good a uh, very good run from the sounds of it. So congrats to SBD Wolf and the other two uh, Mystery Dungeon run. And that's it for the noted runs. So, okay. Do you like to take the uh, the marathon runs? The upcoming ones? Sure. Um, so first we have Brat Ascoa 2023, which is a Brazilian marathon. We have Doomice versus So 15. They're playing X. Um, that's happening April 6th, 14 o'clock. Uh, these are all in UK times. Um, then next we have Really, really lots of lore for, for our LOL for. We have TPAT doing two runs. We have um, PLA, April 7th, uh, 2320. And Let's Go EV, April 22nd, 1656. And then at SpeedCon 2023, we have Crystalmon doing Crystal Key Item Randomizer, April 16th, uh, 325. 
And at no glitches allowed, we have our very own Iron doing Scarlet Violet Path of Legends, April 20th, uh, 2206. Then at Green Gaming Fest of Spring 2023, we have Trevaria doing Let's Go Eevee Pico, uh, 80%, not sure which version, but one of them. Um, April, uh, any percent no mouth skip, April 22nd at 1233. Then we have Iron again, racing against Spider, doing Scarlet Violet, Starfall Street, April 24th at uh, 0039. And then we have RTA in BIIM, not sure if that's how you say it, 2023. Um, we have a, a race, I assume with Yohei, Diluba, Leon Kazuki, and Surupon playing uh, Gold Silver Crystal Beat Lance Parallel. Pretty interested in what that is. But um, that's April 30th, 2023. And then lastly, we have some DS runs at Odyssey de Jure Video. Don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a French marathon. Uh, we have Bill Bonsai and Warax playing HSS 80% Glitch Manipulus. That's at May 6, 11.55. And we have ATN versus SPR playing Diamond Pearl Any% Manipulus. It's a race. That's happening May 6, 16 o'clock. And that's it for marathons. Uh, we should have a GDQ list coming out soon. Um, not sure if that's been released yet. I'll check now. But that won't be happening in the month of April. That will be happening in May. Yeah, so that would be covered by the next podcast. But if it is out, I mean, to be fair, it might be worth throwing it on just as a quick nosy, as a first react maybe for some people. Yeah, be unfortunately, released. does not seem to be released yet. Uh, I think maybe this is completely off base. I feel like it'd be around two. Something like 30 minutes, maybe. Yeah. Because that's. that's Typically. Checking at the top of the hour, probably. Lately, now. Yeah, because yeah, I think that was also around the time last SGG when the tickets were announced, which I know probably has no correlation, but maybe they like to do things at 2 in the morning for the UK. Well, it's it's funny because they used to... So the... They basically say it'll be out today by 11.59 p.m. Pacific. And so that covers like such a wide range of time yeah. um and they used to like i would have to go to bed waiting for the list um on the east coast because like it was too late but lately they've been in the last maybe four years or so it's usually been like yeah 9 p.m eastern uh which would be in like 30 minutes sometimes like once it was even early enough to be like five or six o'clock so just depends just however the feeling, I guess. So, in that case, uh, we'll not talk about the SGDQ schedule being out or about to come out for the cool things because it's not out. But we will start off with the Fire Red Leaf Green uh, tournament is currently going on. Um, I have not put in the times for the race that happened today, but. Uh, there is four more races uh, for this first round, and then I think there is seven in the next round, five in the round after, then three, then one. So quite a few races left. We'll probably be talking about this, well, we will be talking about this um, next month, the podcast, and it should still be going on at that point. But um, what has I have, everyone's I thoughts really been? been following, I haven't really been following this, but there have been quite a few upsets. Uh, so far, you see some pot three runners winning um, yes. their races, or, or pot two runners. Um, yeah. So it's definitely a very unpredictable round one for sure. Yeah, yeah tournament's know, been fire. Uh, yeah, Ekman, Ekman won that race, and I think Zan won the race today. Yep, those yes. are two pot three upsets. And then Chrome won yesterday. That was pot two, but still. Yeah. Uh, Get to like to see that. In fact, I think for for both pot three win, oh, like wins, it was first, reverse pot order. 
Yeah, that came yeah, last. First place got last. Hmm. Which, like, I mean, to be fair as well, like, there weren't, there, there were good race times as well, like, truly with a 2.14.10, yeah, he'd probably be expecting better, maybe, but, but, like, a first round race, that's pretty solid time from my understanding. And uh, Randall had a very similar time around the 2.14 something there as well. Maybe yeah, at least good, the 2.14. The good part about the format of this tournament is that even if you don't get first place, you can still qualify based on your race time. So basically, yeah. if you're in second or third, like you just need to have a good enough qualifying time for round two. So they're yeah, not out of it at, yet. Looking at, yeah, looking at the time so far, it looks likely that Truly and Randall will both advance towards the bottom of the the bracket but but yeah it's definitely uh, definitely a very unpredictable tournament they're gonna get some tough matchups and in, uh, in the later rounds in order for me to advance still I need seven of the remaining eight non winners to get a worse time than I did I don't think it's happening <laughs> Because I'm like right on the cusp already. Need a lot of fire leaf green moments. Yeah, this is a game where if something goes wrong, even a really good runner can lose a lot of time. So, like in the first race alone, there was bouncy ran out of pokeballs catching something on route one, and oh, then yeah. wave <laughs> wave wiped in Mount Moon and had to run back from mom's house. Like, yeah, Matt that all happened in the first oh 30 God. minutes of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and then they ended up finishing 15 seconds apart. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, crazy tournament so far. Yeah. And then also just Anand with the 206 flat. <laughs> yeah, and then casually just... He's just so good at racing. It's like, but first round as well, that's the thing. Like... Enough, it's so, con so consistent. Is Ananan the reigning champ or? Um, I know it was it was Kurt that won it two years ago, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Kurt won it two years ago. I remember that. And I think it's I know Ananan won once, so that would probably be so last would have been, time. It would have been it would yeah it would have been last year. Yeah. Yep. Confirmation in chat. But yeah, uh, next race will be tomorrow at uh, that's at midnight 7 PM UK time, Eastern. seven Eastern. Yes. So a late one for anyone in Europe, but anyone in America, it's still late, but it's not as late. Yeah, I can actually watch it. Uh, yeah, and then one last cool thing, Etiquette, you did a, you were part of a pretty cool thing. Yeah, um, this was interesting, and the fact that it's speedrunning related it was a mystery until like the day before the event. Um, so this was Twitch Rivals. Twitch Rivals uh, has never done a main series Pokemon game before, um, and so they put together this one. It was a two-day event, um, basically day one. Um, is a PvE section, so everyone basically does a competition in the single-player portion of the game, uh, which turned out to be speedrunning. It wasn't advertised as a speedrunning thing. It just, like, once everyone understood the format, because it was kind of ambiguous, uh, it was like, oh, this is just speedrun the game. Um, and then day two was a PvP section. Uh, and so uh, I was the only Pokemon speedrunner, <laughs> or at least a Scarlet Violet speedrunner, I should say. Um, as part of it, so I ended up taking the win on day one. Um, but a lot of people got really, really, really close. Um, the, the general format for day one was starting at the first rival fight. Uh, collect as many badges as you can uh, of the 18 total badges. And then um, tiebreaker was like number of Pokemon caught. And so... Uh, if you look at an any percent run, like my any percent PB gets the 18th badge at about three hours and 50 minutes. Uh, the time window here was four hours. 
So uh, there was just enough time for me to get all 18. This is the 18th badge that we're showing here. Um, but a couple of people ended up with 17. Uh, maybe like five or six got 16 badges. So um, a lot of people who don't speedrun the game actually did really, really well, uh, which was really cool to see, especially with so little prep. Because like I said, we didn't really get a clarification on the rules until, uh, let's see, the event started on Wednesday and they told us basically Monday what the actual format was so it was a really quick turnaround but it was a lot of fun um definitely really cool it was interesting to see like a i haven't gone back and watched a lot of the mainstream uh but it was interesting to have like almost like e not esports commentary but like you know just general commentary like that over speedrun stuff um and you know they didn't quite know like why we were picking flamigo and all that kind of stuff why we were uh, so high level so quickly so it's a really really fun event yeah I, I think it was it was this like section where they like they was hosted by wolfie and i don't remember the name of the other like like the female commentator but she also does like bgc commentary mm -hmm. like, they didn't realize you were on your final Necro, badge yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like i think yeah. it was like this very moment it's like well, I'll switch over to someone who hasn't completed uh, or hasn't got all the budget, which is pretty much everyone at this point. I think there's just there <laughs> yeah. was some good there was some good uh, like sound bites that was like over etiquette stuff, both on the first day and the second day. But yeah, has has there been like an uptick in uh, any Scarlet Violet speedrunning? I would maybe think not, but I don't know. Not really. People. Yeah. Um, there were definitely a few people, like the the two people who ended with seventeen badges, both like did a full speed run before. Um, I don't know if they they finished it out just because like, like the format here was just get as many badges as possible. You didn't actually have to beat the game. Um, so if they didn't actually finish it out, then they might not um submit it or anything. But, um. If they if they find it fun, they might come back. Um, a couple of them uh, were actual speedrunners. Like one of them is an Elden Ring speedrunner. Um, so different genres, but similar mindset. Yeah, I remember Chirno? Is it? What's it now? Um, one of them was Star Chris. I don't remember yeah. who the other one was. I mean, yeah, like I said, there was a few speedrunners dodged around. Uh, you also got a. Uh, you also did like a deviation in the route as well, didn't you? Yeah. So <laughs> they had these superlatives, uh, which were for things that were not the main objective. And so it was um, a couple of them were like, uh, whoever finds a shiny first can get a prize. Um, and so somebody actually found a shiny within the first thirty minutes, which was kind of ridiculous. Um, from a brand new file, mind you. Um, and so there was, there was one for catching and getting a triple XL Pokemon judged and a triple XS Pokemon judged. And it turns out that the former Titan Pokemon count as triple XL Pokemon. Um, and they're guaranteed. And so I basically had modified the any percent route. Because I knew I was the only like Scarlet Violet runner um, or person with a lot of Scarlet Violet running experience in it. I modified the route a little bit. I picked Mount Meow Scarada since I wanted it on my team for day two um, and beat Cloth using the Meow Scarada, which is faster than going to catch Flamigo and beating it with Flamigo. Caught the Cloth and then got it judged immediately, winning the superlative and then just sort of continued the run. Um from there just basically did a bunch of like early movement stuff so i probably was behind if you were comparing me to like other people doing the the normal flamigo route i was probably behind for the majority of the run uh, but then i was able to like sort of catch back up um because there's a bunch of movement sections that i've already done um that i don't have to worry about 
yeah it was a, it was a really cool event i hope they do something like this in the future um i hope it's marketed more like a speed running thing just because like i said i was the only pokemon runner that joined up um and i don't know how much of that was it being it wasn't like invite only you had to express interest and then they would invite you um but i don't know how many people like in the speedrunning scene may have seen it and then not signed up because it's like oh i'm not a competitive pokemon player um yeah where i knew they like have yeah i knew i knew a couple of friends who you know in psr that were really regretting not signing up for this because I, I i think they also looked at how many people were actually invited and like since the cap was 64 mm -hmm. there was only 62 invited they like really thought that they missed out on you know just applying for this like they would have just gone in and then you know maybe given you a fair fight on day one yeah and like and there were there were things like you know if if there were other people like i wouldn't have gone for the superlative right because like the superlative the the prize for that um which i actually during the podcast got the email asking me to uh <laughs> fill something out about that is um was like a you know one of the giant pokemon plushes right and it's like the prizes for the other stuff was actual money so it's like you gotta weigh well i feel like i might be able to win the the, the overall day do i like want to take a break for the superlative stuff and um just knowing that there were other runners would have probably swayed me one way for sure i will also say this helps get me interested in vgc which i'm gonna blame etiquette for that i don't I, have any time <laughs> trust me i i yes i agree <laughs> <laughs> um I've the last two weekends I've spent glued to my Twitch screen watching the regionals. Yeah. Um, and there's like an online something this weekend that I'm going to try to do. So it's banding speed running for competitive Pokemon. Yeah, I won't, I won't try to do that. There's, I got Scarlet. There's, there's one thing I'm wanting. It's a Violet exclusive. I can't do anything about it. And he's like, oh. he figure something out. Or see if I can find someone who will give me a nine hands. I'm sure we can find somebody. So, ideally with zero IV speed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, how long has this podcast gone on for? It's almost three hours. <laughs> Alright, two hours, 45 minutes incoming. Do we want to go through the leaderboard roundup? We can do it very quickly, I guess. Alright. So, a very, very, very quick leaderboard roundup. Alright. Um, if you see a name, feel free to point it out. Like, for example, in 6th place for any percent glitchless classic, Rokia, with a 158.42. Also, when I like skim through this early, because like, I always I skim through it to find any record runs and all like high like noted runs um i don't think there was as many runs this month compared to like previous months people are busy i guess i can understand that i relate also there might be a lot of people preparing for so there might be a lot for fire red leaf room we'll find out in a second <laughs> um but also stm with the the three the 3ds virtual console uh Gold silver runs. Yeah. Something you don't see that often. I think the last Never time. <laughs> last time you saw that was me. Yeah, with your world records there, I see. Uh, I'm still a little upset that they separated it, but. I got over it. Three world records. At that point. Uh. I really free. Wave with a 20206. Yeah. Oh, Maybe this one would have actually have showed up. Uh, Amoeba got a 202 flat. Yes, I saw that That's on right. Twitter today. Yeah. Also, quite a few Brazilian runners because um, the I really free tournament is being restreamed on the, uh, the Brazilian. Like, 
don't, I can't honestly remember the speed of the channel name, but like a Brazilian speedrunning channel. Oh, is so, it? There's like yeah. a. Oh, I didn't know that. So, so there's like from uh, Dan, and so I know I butchered those last two names. But, uh, yeah, all of them. All of them had good races in the tournament. Yeah, they did so. as well. I think they'll all. They're all seemingly likely they will advance. I think. Yeah, it's very likely. Yeah. And then there's also Balancy as well, but you know, Balancy is based in uh, Germany. Germany. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Math Genius, 235 in Emerald. Balancy, 126 in any percent. Both places in any percent fair play. Prabs with a new PB in Heart Gold, any percent, 208, 58. Was the Desmu May split this past month, or was that the previous one? I think that was two months ago. Okay. Yeah. Everything blends into one. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's me. I got a 311 in white, too. I wanted that for a while. Yeah. I was there with the world record for emulator on black white. Yeah. He, uh, that's just his minute plus PP just submitted to main board. Fair play, if the rules allow for it, may as well. Yep. Really second, but then Tucker in eighth. Good run. Yeah, um, still more to go, but happy to get a, a time like that. And then Joanna with a 3.45 in actually also. That was unfortunate from what I heard. Yeah, she, she had two paces better than this, like 3.44s and... They both died to missing the 15 and 16 on Seabold. Yeah. Ugh. It's one thing. If it, when it's out of your control, you kind of just have to put it down to the game and yeah. hope, hope you can pick the... Hope you can pick the, in this case, 3DS back up. Even if, if you need a break for it. Uh, truly in 5th for Sun Moon. 5, 16, or 4. On 3DS as well. Old PB apparently. Oh, <laughs> there. Five month old PB. I still find it funny, like one of the funniest like world record pipelines with Amoeba running emeralds, <laughs> running that, and then just ends up with a sub new world record. I still find <laughs> that hilarious. It's so funny. A uh, couple of uh, shield, well, a couple of sword and like a couple of shield. Uh, one for no turbo, one four turbo. Dynam in eleven for the four fifteen nineteen, and then psychic champion in four for the four forty two nineteen. I think it's still without world record. Uh, Dynam as well for like for brilliant diamond. Uh, don't see much of these runs. Uh, English no turbo music off on brilliant diamond. Uh, three twenty-five thirty-six. Not a bad time at all. Yeah, and actually, just a, a name that I recognize, Red Kelt, uh, with any percent English music off at nineteen forty-four. Uh, Red Kelt being one of the people who I believe is I believe it's just organizer for the BSG marathon, and then also I think helps out with ESAs. So just. Interesting to see Ray Cole there. Uh, T Pat with a uh, eighth in. Uh, I assume it's Scarlet. Oh no, he runs Violet, doesn't he? He runs Violet, and he runs. Uh, it's worth noting it's physical, so this is yeah. the fastest physical time. The yeah, moment. So like, T Pat. He need that. He needs the handicap. So, or like, everyone like hand, oh, T Pat handicaps himself so he can give everyone else a chance, basically. That's that's the narrative I'm gonna go with. Because <laughs> like that is a really good time, like especially with physical. To my under like, again, to my understanding, and on the the slower game as well, and the combined lead was so I like, just full credit to T Pat. Spider in third with their uh, Path of Legends fifty two thirty eight, Ivaria in fourth with a fifty two forty nine, Dynam with is that the full. I don't think there was any let's go runs, will they? Almost the the full switch sweep 
uh, for PBs, 52-58, representing at least in one game. Yeah, Dyna picked this up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. And also, oh, Etiquette. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, this was, uh, I've been wanting to try out a small route change. Like, just changing the order of some stuff, getting a different candy, and making it so you can, like, fly straight to the Elite Four um, by, like, tagging the center early. Um, and so it's been really hard to compare against, like, any of my PBs to see how I'm actually doing, because it's just added and removed time everywhere. Um, and this run felt okay, felt okay, it felt okay, and then all of a sudden I was a minute ahead. So, uh, I think it's improvable for sure, but I hate this game. You have to like it if you want to do VGC stuff. I know. Uh, and then also Chrysosaurus with the uh, glitched version, which... Oh, the poor glitch is being removed. Yeah, and... I, don't, I don't know if we mentioned that on the podcast last time. Um, maybe, but the... Uh... Was it a thing last time? Oh, yeah, it would have been because it was February. It would have just yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah. the... Uh... The patch that we got at the end of February, beginning of March, um, did not improve performance, but did remove the super glide glitch. So um, we as a community haven't really talked about what to do about that in terms of leaderboards. Um, but for now, basically glitched is a don't update your game kind of thing. Uh, I think it's at least possible on 1.0, so you could always get like a physical version of the game and uh do it that way uh without updating but it's sort of like that bdsp don't update your game otherwise you can't do this category anymore sort of thing so it's a bit unfortunate situation yeah i mean to my knowledge i think it's only really crisis and uh pulse i think did some glitched there might be other yeah. ones, but i can't remember i know Hulk I did know. some in prep for esa uh, that, that would make sense Snap Rinist from the Japanese side of the game, or like Japanese side of the scene, uh, on the Switch as well. So, yeah, 80% third and fourth, and second in the 100%. Uh, so, it's Aquas and Task Beginner. Pinball Ruby Sapphire, hell yeah. Beat Ray Cross with Sapphire Field, and the go. Uh, and then fifth, Nagai Megan. And then Bouncy as well, doing a couple. Get a second on uh, Catch Durachi as well. Closing in on Amoeba. Threatening. Um, Jeff in 40th with Colosseum. Uh, Rule doing Rescue Team DX. Let's see. Uh, Cruel back to doing attempts. And then. Uh, Oh, Soothing Silver. Um, yeah. HSS ROM hack. Krabs does like an insane tweet to get um, Waterfall, but you have to do like an Ice Pass skip. And then, like, after you get to Blackthorn, you have to like go back into Ice Path by doing like four tweaks. Some of them where like you have like no reference except for like items on the ground. It's just completely dark. It's like one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Huh? Bad boy. Uh, and then the category extensions. So There's the activity in Clefable. Yes, uh, but it's part of the bounty, I assume. Yeah, it, the bount the bounty like is given out at the end of the year, like best time at the end of the year. But it's nice to see that sub 150 has been achieved. So currently, this is the run that would get the bounty by Arya. And Matt closing in with a 150 for himself. Keeping it icy, I'm um, doing Ruby glitchless. 209 at 39. All the French runners. 
I guess uh, part of it was always be always going to be French runners. Yeah. Delicious. And then also uh, uh, Jimmy there. Jimmy's got the factory gold print. Not the first to do it, but it didn't take like forever. So, it's a good run. Yeah, actually, that was uh, in the PSL highlights clip. True. Got to see the ending. Yeah. Sorry for the spoilers, I guess. <laughs> uh, the, the room finished. <laughs> but, Must see um, moment. Yeah, JT uh, with the old table legends manipulus is six of seven ten. More French runners. French runners popping off in the category extensions over the DS. Love to see it. A head bob with a old main Del Fox. It's okay, old Megastone is second. Oh, I forgot I did this. Yeah, I, that was de-rusting X, and that's just like a category that I, you know, I figured I'd do. Because it's yeah. basically any percent plus like a few extra things at the end of the game. Yep. Fair, fair. Um, head bob with the old root X drill. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Keep an eye on this. Uh, this route. I want to try this route at some point. This is really cool. Yeah, it's it's Sobble into Excadrill. Um, yeah. Hebop thinks that has like a pretty high ceiling, but right now he just wants a four weight, I believe. Yeah, theoretically, that is a uh, it is a route that's on my alley. Well, I could I might give that a look. If I ever have some time, it's because it's a raid. Uh, it's a raid den. It's a uh, drill buff. Yeah. Should say. Raid den drill buff. Not as a drill. Uh, so, guaranteed catch is nice. <laughs> I think he's capable of 404, Ed Bob. That is a very um, high ceiling. It's not like 405 is possible. So, I don't know what that tells you, but. Okay, are we talking possible like Sobble? 404 for Sobble? Like, <laughs> like possible as in like, it can happen, but I'm not sure if I if I can do it. Okay, so my best 401 and it's mostly not fake. All right, all right. Yeah, that, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, that would, I, that would put it better than Archidrill Excadrill. Like, oh, the Archidrill Excadrill. And then Archidrill. So, um, maybe... Well, I, I, want, I want to get sold first, but maybe I'm too focused on would that. <clears throat> would that work in shield too? That, uh, oh, is, I thought that, I was thinking in my head that was shield. No, I think it's sword. Okay, head Bob, you might need to clarify that because I, I was thinking it was shield the, this entire time. I'm pretty sure it's shield. It's the fighting gym. Yeah. Oh, right, sold. Yeah, okay. I mean, sword. I'm not sword. I'm not sword. I don't know how shield would go just because like Melanie would be trickier because you wouldn't have earthquake yet and you don't have the Arcanine to do like the fallback um, flash. Oh, nice. Right? Amber's, Amber's running it. Yeah, we'll, we will maybe find oh, Amber's running on shield. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I may take a look at that. If uh... No, I'm I'm, I'm I'm more just thinking the Lapras is bulky as hell, so having the extra power from Earthquake would be nice. What is the what is the strat for Archidrill with extra drill? Because so, normally you use Arcanine as well, don't you? Anyway. Yeah, like if you're just soloing with Excadrill, you would guard spec, and you can Swords Dance times two, and then Earthquake, and Earthquake can be a range if you have bad attack. So. You might be able to do it at plus six against the Lapras, but I don't know for sure. Um, but the problem with going to plus six is you then have to worry about potentially like ice face is already a problem. So you just have to worry about it a little bit more. Um, yeah. It's probably doable. It, it's yeah. just a little less optimal than it probably like. I mean, a rock gym is probably, you know, use your ground move four times, maybe set up once. <laughs> Fair. Or even Smart Strike could work as well. I forgot that that's super effective. That's one of the weirdest 
type interaction, steel being super effective against rock. Yeah, but I guess it makes sense. You know, if you think about it in a weird way, like a pickaxe, use a steel pickaxe. All right, don't use your logic here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I will go back to being logicless. Um, DSP category essentially aspect with all key items through 2246. Hero with the uh, stadium category extensions. BBV with Battle Revolution category extensions. Any uh, percent? Oh, that's just a Japanese win of any percent round one. Any uh, percent round one. Cool. And then, last but not least, Ryzakun with the world record for Purified Lugia in XD at 6.15.20. And that is the leaderboard roundup. This has been a long, a long podcast. It was, all late. it was a very late starting podcast as well. But um, I'm glad to see people who stuck around. And yeah, so the next podcast, in theory, will be on the sixth of May. <laughs> it may be, it may be, it may change, depending on the fire rate league green tournament. There'll be a lot less races at that time, but it obviously, but it's still being a Saturday. That is a typically a pretty easy time to schedule a race. So we will see. But um, in the meantime, podcast hosts. Thank you all for joining. Once again, I say again at a different time to normal. I would type podcast guest, but I realized I did not update that command, so I will just say thank you, Swift, and thank you, Zeke. Uh, for coming on explaining color and XD. It was very insightful. And yeah. Any uh anything that anyone else wants to say? Nope. Thank, thank, thank you to our guests again and uh, thank you everyone for uh, tuning in. Oh, uh, watch the Fire Ridley Dream Race tomorrow. Yes, it's on uh, this channel. Yeah, right, he yeah, right here on channel. PSR TV. Yep. Oh, and follow Pokemon and Speedruns TV too as well because there will be races on that sometimes as well. Yes, there will be a race there on Saturday. I'm commentating that one. Catch me there. Tune in only to listen to Tucker. Yep, that's it. No other reason. <laughs> Watch in audio only. <laughs> if the other commentator starts talking, mute the tab. <laughs> uh, goodbye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>